first like to just say that it's an honor to, honor to have been elected chair of the board. And I meant what I said uh, earlier or in June that I intend to be uh, inclusive with all of the board. And um, I hope that we can um, work together well this year. We have a lot of work together and uh, work in the spirit of, of a team. So um, before we begin business, uh, John has requested to um, to say uh, to make a statement. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Andy. Um, there is uh, there will be a piece of business that will come before the board, kind of as a very first order of business, from which I need to recuse myself. Um, and I wanted to just clarify um, why I would be stepping away uh, because it's a matter of a complaint. Um, to which I'm a party on the other side. So I will be recusing myself um, rather immediately as Andy needs to review that with, uh, with the board. Um, one other quick thing um, as a point of personal preference. Um, it wasn't my original intent. I was ex expected to be away this week, but I'm here. Um, we had a did an addition to the agenda. I thought it was really important that I be here for that addition. And um, I've given some serious thought um, and reflection, actually, and have reviewed some material that has become public record um, from the Recreation Committee. And they have a request that involves um, a difference in liaison. Um, and giving it considerable thought, um, I've made a decision that I'd like to petition to the chair, and that is the following, that um, in light of the fact that I have, this would be my fifth year as liaison, um, and in light of the fact that it sounds as though they feel they need a little different voice, I don't think that's an unreasonable request. I would suggest to uh, the chair that you look to replace me in that position. I think the move to a second um, person that acting chair Berman did was a good idea. I think that committee is a very important committee. Um, I've been actively involved, not officially with that committee, but as a citizen for 25 years um, and intend to do it. You know, I did it long before I was a selectman here. <clears throat> My interest in the success of the Recreation Committee, all its activities, the various fields it supervises, is of paramount importance to me. Armed with all that information, I do think that it's fine, a fine idea if we move forward given you know their wishes. And so I would suggest to you, Andy, that um, you accept my resignation from that liaison position and that you seek to put another name in nomination and that the, uh, that the board act on that. I think it's really important for us to, you mentioned it in your remarks, I, I think we have to move forward with the town business and not get ourselves locked up in too much acrimony. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, um, I'm offering that. Um, you know, my, my uh, resignation from that liaison position in favor of a second person that would be joining Dan. So that's what I have to say. Thanks, I know John. that you've got things that you've got to you, talk about that I need to recuse myself from. Yep. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Right. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, so Okay, so uh, yesterday the town clerk's office received a complaint um, by John, an open meeting law complaint um, that <coughs> uh, we need, the, the town is, or the select board, I'm sorry, is, is uh, required to respond to. Um, given that we just received the, the, this complaint yesterday, um, I would I would like to request uh, an extension on for our response to uh, the state and um, the 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 open meeting law violation um, is on record with the town clerk 
if, if anyone would like to look at that. Um, but I would like to uh, ask for an extension from the state, as is allowed by open meeting law, because I, I, I and I don't think my fellow, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if my fellow uh, select members, select board members, could repair or could prepare an adequate response within a day's period. Yeah. So, so with that in mind. Um, Bob, if you could bring up the letter um, that I wrote, um, and I'd ask the board to take a look at it. I emailed it to the board this afternoon. I asked the town clerk to review it. Um, she is our open meeting law watchdog, and um, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. The the guidelines state that you need the the, the, the body needs to, if they want to request an extension, state the reason and submit a copy of the open meeting law violation complaint or com open meeting law violation complaint to the state. So I put that, that together and as you can read, um, we'll have to figure out, count the days till August 21st, but um, <coughs> which I'll, I'll read it aloud so that everybody... Um, uh, and, and this goes to the um, Office of uh, Open, the Division of Open Government, uh, Office of the Attorney General. Uh, to, whom, to whom it may concern, the Select Board respectfully requests an extension of X days. Obviously, we need to count. I'd count say those days. 42. 42 days. Uh, to respond to the open meeting law complaint by John Halsey. The complaint was recently received by the Reading Town Clerk on July 9th. Uh, see attached, the board requests this extension for the following reasons. Board members were not able to adequately respond to the complaint during the board's meeting of July 10th because it was received one day prior to the board's meeting. And the board understands the seriousness of open meeting law complaints. In order to fully and adequately respond to the complaint, the select board would prefer to consider the complaint and determine a response during the board's next two meetings that are scheduled for July 31st and August 21st. Sorry about the run on. Um, the board chair announced the complaint during the open meeting, during the, uh, the opening of the meeting of July 10th. The board will discuss the complaint with town council during the meeting of July 31st. The board will request town council to prepare a draft response and the response will be finalized on uh, August 21st. So uh, I'd like to make a motion that the, we begin discussion on, on the letter. A second. Okay, here we go. Mr. Chair, do I understand that town council simultaneously prepared a letter? Town council did one for back in November, um, but it was a little different. We were requesting an extension, um, and I felt um, my desire was A, uh, I think I'd l generally I'm on something as direct as this which is in the uh, open meeting law guidelines. They require an explanation of the reason or reasons and a copy of the complaint. So I'm trying to utilize the expertise of our town staff so that we don't, um, so we're cognizant and be cognizant of our um, town council expenses because we are a fr fr frugal town. So, if, but if the board decides that they would like to um, have the lawyer review this letter, um, it, it's quite different from the, the November letter that was prepared. Um, it just, I, 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 like, I tried to make it direct. If I might. <coughs> Andy and I had discussed this with Laura in an email earlier today and I was expecting a reply. Um, when I didn't get one, and now I understand he was traveling some distance. Uh, when I didn't get one, I asked town council to prepare a letter for this exact same situation. So you have two competing letters to have an audience vote. Um, so it is relevant to the same issue, if you will. Uh, it addresses many of the same things. Um, it was not my intention to have two. I just didn't know until Andy sent it after 6 o'clock we were going to have one at all. And I 
thought it was important that the board have a letter to yeah. approve. So whichever letter the board uh, chooses is fine. They yeah, I think in the future we'll the same thing, but the was, one uh, from town was council Ray's letter sorry. signed by Ray for the board, or was it? Yes. I mean, I read both letters. I mean, mm -hmm. they both do the same thing. It's not a big deal, yep. um, you know. Uh, given that, um, you know, we have a town council. You already wrote the letter, and then the other thing too is that since the board, we're sort of the subject of the. Uh, yep. That it, it's probably better to come from the town attorney than from U.S. Chair or any one of us, for that matter. And that um, since we're sort of named as the, you know, yeah. violators, it's probably sort of a little bit more arm's distance to have it be. I mean, that's my only thing. I mean, letters, both letters are fine. They do yeah. the job. But, you know, there was that letter prepared sort of in the, in transit. So I, you know, I, uh, all things being equal, that, well, that's what we pay them for. So I, that, that's my, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. But right. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, uh, I, my, my only other comment is um, if the board is ever concerned about legal expenses, they should certainly consult me. As you got in your packet over the weekend, we have seventy-two thousand dollars surplus in that line right. item, minus whatever he charges in June. Right. Um, and I, I would just caution the board broadly: um, sometimes the best legal money is spent up front, not later. And the town has had examples of that, unfortunately, in the past. So, um, first, Bob and I will improve our communication. Um, you know, I, I spoke to Laura on the road. Um, asked her to review or asked if she received my letter and if she would review and get back to me. So I got home, I got all these emails um, and uh, responded. But we'll, you know, um, in that case, uh, I um, will f we'll get better at our communication uh, on, the, on that front. So Mr. Chair, would you consider a friendly amendment if I substituted the letter the town council wrote for the one you did? Um, Bob, yeah. could I, sorry, could I ask you to scroll down? I haven't read the whole letter. Sure. Thank yeah, you. and I seem to have gotten the wrong one. <coughs> or have opened the no, wrong this, one. This so I, haven't, I really haven't... How many haven't, violations do we have? <laughs> no, no, this was from back This in is from about 5.30 tonight. One dog. One dog. One dog. It's, it's titled One Dog or One D-O-G? Oh, something like that, yes. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think in the interests of time, the town clerk thought that, that this letter was okay. Um, this is a very simple, basic request to the state. Uh, I've received many of them myself in my capacity uh, in the job, but for a different department. Um, and what? And I've spoken to the uh, lawyer of the day at Open Meeting Law. And what they look for from the board is that the board is responding, the board recognizes the importance of the open meeting law complaint, um, and um, um, addresses it. I think it's actually, a, I, I mean, I'd like to sign this. Uh, I, I just signed it my name, but on behalf of the board because we have to vote on it. I, I, I think there's an advantage to the state getting something directly from us um, uh, and uh, and, I, and I'd have to go, <laughs> I also have to review, uh, I didn't get this until uh, just after I got home and I really haven't had a chance to review it, I'm afraid. I withdraw my amendment. Okay. Go ahead. Um. Um, I'll read not not to nitpick on this, but um, I actually would agree with Barry's amendment. Um, I think going forward, you know, Andy and Bob, you can you can work it out. But there are details mm -hmm. in um, Ray's letter that I think um, would be helpful for the extended delay, given mm -hmm. that we have fewer meetings mm -hmm. this month um, or this summer, um, as opposed to our regularly every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I, I I'd like to see that included, and instead of yeah. Sort of I you know, thought cross-referencing the two, it might just be easier to send this one. Okay. Does is and the re the reasons are outlined. Um, just give me one second to. Good. 
I think I, I'm comfortable. I, I, I'm, if you guys are, that's what the, that's what the uh, feel of the board is. And I make my friendly friendly. And you can make your friendly friendly. I'm withdrawing your friendly amendment. And and I will. I, I just uh, use the letter that tells. The seconder I, accepts it. Okay. Um, all in favor? Or any more discussion on this? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Um, Can I just ask a question um, yes. just for town council's benefit? So, yes. Um, you would you would want town council at your July thirty first meeting to review this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll just make sure. Thank you. John. Oh yeah, I can go get John when you're done. Should we also have him at the August twenty first meeting in case we have any changes? To I, th the first I one? think I think he'll prepare for that in case you don't complete your business on the thirty first. Yeah, that's a good idea. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Oh, he's not really going. To, are you done with this? Quick oh. catch you on? Yeah. yeah, I thought he was getting Sorry, it. Sorry, I thought he was more thirsty. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, you did. Thanks. I'll call one minute recess. I didn't. Oh, did you, did you get it? <laughs> oh. John, you could have brought back some coffees. I had one out there. I wasn't gone that long. Um, okay, it's 717. We're supposed to be discussing uh, the act to promote housing choices, but I'd, I'd like to take um, select and liaison reports and comments. And, uh, I'll start with Dan. Sure. Uh, I don't have a liaison report. I did want to respond to... Uh, Frank Masaglia, who emailed us uh, regarding uh, why can't we negotiate basic cable prices and things of that nature. Uh, I just want to respond generically in that uh, we are not, the scope of our negotiations do not include pricing and does not include cable selection. So those two are off the table. We can't touch okay. those. We wish we could. You can't go toe to toe with these. Not all issues, no. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, um, That's it. Oh, yeah. that's uh, I'm just trying to get through the liaison reports. I thought somebody would wave their hand. No, sorry. I <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you were just throwing me off. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Bear. Okay. I'll, I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, I have a, a few things I wanted to talk about. So um, I know Bob may mention this too, but um, just sort of on general communications and policy, Vanessa and I are going to be getting together. Soon. Tomorrow morning. Oh, <laughs> Tomorrow maybe, morning. well, maybe. maybe. <laughs> That's soon. Uh, to discuss well, sort of overall communications, depending on what time we get out of here tonight. Um, but one thing that I actually wanted to sort of um, convey, um, I am the uh, select board guinea pig in that I have now been um, given a, a Reading, uh, you know, ci.reading.ma.us sort of official email, which now I use for all of my communications. Um, that's something that we agree when we did general communication policy that all of us would do. Um, I sort of raised my hand first and um, the lads here in, in technology were, uh, were uh, more than uh, happy to put it on my phone. It's generally an outlook, same as any probably your outlook at work. Um, you can get your email, you can do folders, um, you can, um, and actually it's great for when we can communicate to do scheduling because it has a scheduling function. And obviously the most important thing is that every email that we send um, on town business now goes through the town server. So there's no, there's no question about record keeping. All of us have our own different systems, the forwarding addresses, <coughs> Yahoo, Gmail, whatever. And you know, it's a mess, we agreed to do it. So I've been using it now for a week. Um, it 
it's works okay I still have to kind of figure out but it's basically an outlook system so I know we agreed to do it and, and, and I don't know if there's a timeline but I, I would urge all of us to go down um, I think it's Kevin and um, Patrick, Patrick yeah. are the the two fellows they sit behind um, where yep. Laura's office is and it takes five minutes to get on and, and probably five minutes to get on. so I just wanted to um, mention that and you know make sure I think at, at some point we should have you know, kind of a timeline by which we will all have been doing that, especially if we're all going to be, you know, responding to um, emails and, and from constituents. So that's that. Okay, see, um, I attended the CPDC meeting last night. I know uh, Vanessa was there as well. She stayed after I did, so she might have more to report. But the big issue there was uh, Meadowbrook Golf Club is um, submitting uh, plans to re basically tear down and redo their clubhouse. The main issue sort of of contention or concern is that whether, since they're basically knocking it down and building the, sort of the exact same thing, actually a smaller facility, whether it needs um, a special permit or it's just they can go through site planning. Our town council rendered an opinion that, that, that does not need a special permit. You can imagine there were neighbors on and from both sides that were sort of disagreeing. Um, CPTC really liked the design. Uh, it's in the same location, but just sort of angled differently. Um, but there are a couple of the concerns that are going to definitely need to be addressed um, are sort of the way they get the deliveries, um, their flow, and, and, and parking. Uh, it could come back to us um, in the sense that anybody who drives down Meadowbrook knows that there are, sometimes there are some cars that are parked sort of not in Meadowbrook, but on the side. That's town-owned land. Um, that was sort of uh, brought up as sort of a, a, a traffic and safety issue. Um, if that does get mitigated, it's going to have to come here as we are the road commissioners and whether or not we make it no parking, parallel parking, time parking, that's something that may come back to us. Um, so that was um, kind of the issue that I sat for. Um, another thing I want to bring to everybody's attention, sort of I don't know, maybe a personal plug, um, my son just completed um, a documentary on the Reading Police Department mm -hmm. called Behind Blue Lights. Um, it's on the Police Department uh, Facebook page. It's on RCTV Facebook page. Um, it's basically a 45-minute um, documentary on the day-to-day -day workings of the Reading Police Department. Um, he went on a number of ride-alongs, did interviews. Um, it's a fascinating, I mean, I'm not just saying this because it's my son, but it's a fascinating look mm -hmm. behind the scenes about what happens at on the day-to-day -day of the Reading Police Department. You will, if you watch it in its entirety, you will be fascinated by what happens in this town and how grateful we are to have the men and women of the Reading Police Department. It's a great watch. It's gonna be actually on RCTV over the next week, a couple times a day. But I encourage everybody to look for it on YouTube behind blue lights. It's a great, great film. Um, I was with HVAC with Andy. I'm gonna let you report on that since you have a liaison, um, but just wanted to say that. Um, also, a couple of, it seems like forever ago, a couple of Fridays ago, the library hosted basically a block party. There had to be close to 700 people there. Um, in terms, they had food trucks, not enough. They just weren't expecting the huge turnout. There was music. Everybody had a great time. Um, every time I get the opportunity to talk about how great the library is and the job that they do, I'm going to take it because that was an amazing, they pulled that off. Um, I, it looked like half the town was there. Kids were running around. People were dancing. People were, you know, talking to each other. Um, they plan on doing it again. So it was just a real, for those of us who grew up in, the real, in a real city, like my Myself. We had block parties all the time, and that's what this felt like at the Reading Library. So um, if they have it again, please go. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about, sort of again, this is on a, on a personal matter, that, and Mr. Chair, please indulge me. Um, uh, yeah. At our last meeting, I was uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically rude to a fellow member. Um, during the discussion on reorganization, I made personal what was really intended uh, to be general. When I said, Andy, you aren't ready to be the chair, I meant to suggest past boards shied away from elevating <coughs> to the chair those without at least a year of experience in leadership. What came out, and what I don't believe, is that, Andy, you're not in that you're incapable of leading this board. Quite the contrary. Um, experience matters, um, and I was attempting to convey my hope that as chair, you'll draw on the board members' experiences so that you know, you'll have as, a um, you know, deep, as deep a context as possible. Um, but experience is not the only component of what makes a good chair. Um, temperament matters, listening matters, compassion matters, and new perspectives matter. Um, I'm confident you have these qualities in abundance right now. So I was embarrassed by the way I behaved, and I'm sorry for that. Um, it's not how I'm built. 
Um, I've spent my entire public life trying to bring people together. Um, and at a time when our leaders need to be sort of the embodiment of civility, um, I was unfair and I was unkind. Um, so I apologize to you in the town. As vice chair, I'm ready and willing to assist you in any way you'd like. Um, governing, whether it's local government, state government, national government, um, is hard enough without people sniping at each other. Um, I think the town's looking to all of us for leadership, and I hope you feel comfortable, and we all feel comfortable, actually leaning on each other. So, Andy, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, accepted, and um, yeah, I, I hope for the same thing. Yes. Um, so I have, a, I have three liaison reports. Um, the cemetery board um, ha is reminding everyone that they've implemented uh, their new and clarified regulations. Uh, implementation is primarily for safety and maintenance reasons. There's actually very few changes, um, but they are starting enforcement. So for example, no glass faces, no shepherd's hooks. Um, detailed information can be found on the town website under departments, cemeteries. Um, you may receive have one of these um, if you are visiting there and have something that's not in compliance with their new regulations. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to chat to town staff. They're happy to clarify anything for and you. what is that? Um, these are Town of Reading violation notices, and they let you know um, what actions are going to be taken. Uh, there's a phone number here for you to reach out to the cemetery staff. So um, don't panic. It's okay. They're just letting you know what's happening. Where does somebody find that? Um, on presumably tied um, on the grave. On Headstone on the gravestone, yeah. Um, but I know that the staff has already been reaching out to people who regularly visit the cemetery, and so they've been informed. Um, there's no penalty. They, they're just trying to make it safe. And yeah, I think most of the residents hope their ticket days were over, but <laughs> it appears. <laughs> so, that's what they say, government will get you even when you're dead. <laughs> Consider it a friendly I reminder. I prefer they be uh, yellow or red, red, like in football. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, bear with me, I, uh, to follow up on uh, Barry CPDC liaison report, there was also a Perfectos site plan review. They're planning to expand parking availability for staff. There's been some concerns by the neighbors of uh, staff parking on nearby streets uh, very early in the morning. Um, there was also a discussion regarding the master plan. Um, Gene, who's, who's here, Dean Deller, suggested um, exploring a, a vision, if you will, of a master plan before hiring a consultant um, to make sure that the direction the consultant takes is in line with the desires of the town. Um, Dave Tuttle suggested a periodic review to compare the current plan with uh, the previous plan with where we are now. Um, the idea of making it a living document so it's evolving with the needs of the town. Um, the new member, Pamela Anderson, is that her there? Do you remember? Pamela Adrian. Adrian, Adrian thank you. Yeah. Uh, Pamela Adrian um, suggested being aware of large scale projects outside. Pamela Anderson. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that took me a minute. You just got uh, it. I did. I'm a little slow. Um, aware of large scale projects that are going um, on outside of Reading that are like, that could possibly affect us. The big discussion on the Amazon headquarters, um, the lack of housing available uh, in Boston, the development of the seaport, et cetera. Um, because some of these, this growth could potentially affect writing schools, roads, infrastructure, as well as housing. Um, so for RMLD, they're continuing their Shred the Peak program. You can sign up for email alerts letting you know when the peaks are anticipated. Uh, you can sign up for the, on the RMLD website, scroll down to Shred the Peak, click on sign up for email alerts. Um, they give you tips like don't run your dishwasher or your washer or your pool pumps during peak time. Um, an interesting thing to know that I just found out is that the highest usage of the year sets our rate for the entire year. So conserving energy will affect you on your bill, so something to consider. Um, they're also running an Electrify Your Ride pro pilot program, so if you're interested in an electric vehicle, uh, they're having a ride and drive event on Sunday, July 15th from 10 to 2. You can see new vehicles, uh, talk to vendors, dealers, and owners. There's also various rebates available. Uh, there's a new RMLD website, it's mobile friendly, you can check it out. Um, and then. If I can draw your attention to the screen, there's a few pictures. RMLD recently updated their control room. It's 
absolutely state of the art. Uh, it's improving efficiency, communication with rate payers, and responsiveness. What you're looking at here is the main control room. There's actually two more screens that you can't see. Um, Bob, if you can go to the next one. Uh, this is the entire RMLD grid. It includes Reading, uh, Linfield, Wilmington, and North Reading. North Reading, thank you. Next one. Yes, please. Um, this act. This is a closer-up shot of the neighborhoods. This is actually Reading, um, and the difference between the red and the yellow is that they are reviewing each um, transformer that serves neighborhoods to know whether or not enough power is being supplied. Um, Bob, can you take the next one? This is actually my street, um, and so this is what the new software and control room can do, um, allowing them to be much more responsive to ratepayers. So. That's it. I can tell you to turn your lights off. <laughs> I couldn't think. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> well, just to clarify one point. You sure. said the uh, the peak usage sets the rate. Are you talking about commercial uh, time of day billing only, or like the average person that's just one meter? Yes, uh, for, uh, for residential usage. Yeah. So the peak town use. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. I see what you said. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. I actually have um, spent most of the time since our last uh, visit up at Boy Scout camp helping them get ready to open up for the summer, which started yesterday, and um, rolling out the Reading Bulldogs, uh, which are on a five-game winning streak. So um, I haven't been as good a selectman as I've been, you know, um, a volunteer in the other organizations. So, uh, but I have nothing new to report on the um, on my liaison opportunities. Um, my liaison and chair report, um, I'll, 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 I'm going to cut short a little bit. Uh, I, I, I plan to hopefully, with Bob's assistance, get together the agenda uh, on the Monday before the Thursday. We usually send it out, send it to you, uh, and ask you if you'd like to make any additions. This is my way of, of, of making the agenda a more inclusive process. So I, I may be missing something important, or Bob and I may be missing something important, and, and if so, I'd like to, that to be caught by, by the four of you. Um, the liaison report that I have is from the Human Relations Advisory Committee. They had a, a good meeting uh, on the July 5th. They, the one thing to report there is that with regard to our statement about anti-Semitic vandalism that, that the board voted on, uh, they, they are going to, as a start, they're going to reach out to the business community regarding this. Um, they're going to reach out to community service groups and they're going to reach out to youth sports and scouts um, and discuss it, how, how these groups could maybe help in addressing this, these uh, in, too many anti-Semitic uh, vandalism occurrences. Um, that's just a start. We as a board um, can discuss it um, as soon, soon as possible, but we have to get all the stakeholders in the room, like HRAC, um, so that that could be some um, needs that's going to need some preparation and planning. Okay, uh, public comment. I'd ask you to uh, keep your um, comments to two minutes. I don't have a timer, so you're on the honor system. Um, and uh, and please direct your comments at me. Um, and, and and if if you can, try to keep personalities. Uh, out of it. That doesn't mean you can't criticize us, um, or <laughs> but um, you know, just try to keep things respectful if possible. Thanks. So, anybody for public comment? Nancy, um, yes. Say your name. Nancy, Dr. Pearl Street. I just wanted to um, comment on a concern that the assistant town manager presented to this board at the last selected meeting about staffing in the health department, health division, low staffing levels, and the retention issue in the health department is not a new issue before this board. Um, both the liaisons um, have been, uh, that information has been shared to both of the liaisons by the board of health 
Um, Beth Sherlin, I think, cited that as a major concern she had when she gave her resignation to this board last August. Mm -hmm. So what I'm asking is, like John Doherty, retention is part of the um, town manager's evaluation. If we could have, like John Doherty's, um, information, reasons why staff leaves, mm -hmm. and if we could have a breakdown of retention for uh, different town departments. Um, I do know that the override doesn't cover everything. The last three employees who left the health division, salary was not an issue. So I just think it would be helpful if we could have some patterns of improved retention. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. We we're going to uh, discuss the town uh, manager's um, uh, performance review this evening, and we'll keep those thoughts in mind. Yes, Jane. Yeah, hi. Uh, Jane Delio's assistant town manager. I'm glad I'm here to respond to the previous comment. Um, the comment that I made last time, you might recall, had to do with a very uh, new initiative. So it, wasn't, it had nothing to do with current staffing levels being in <coughs> had to do with bringing on an enormously demanding new initiative, which would be around pesticides in a tree lawn, and the need for staffing to um, collect soil samples, follow up with having the soil samples evaluated in a laboratory, uh, follow up with all the shipping and testing, and an enormous amount of legwork that would go into that. That was my point about um, how this would impact staffing is a new initiative. Nothing to do with existing staffing levels. So I just want to make that a point of clarification. Thank you, Jean. Um, I was responding to her statement that they were down in such a position. That's my question. Yes. Excuse me, down. Jean's comments that they were down in seven positions. That, that was her. Health? She just said. I think we have seven positions. She said seven yeah. positions. I don't know. Can, just can, 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 we, can we discuss but, this? But that's all. But that's yeah. all I'm going to Jean, I'd like to discuss well, this. Well, it's only fair that she responds. I'd like okay. to respond if I could, please. I'm sorry, and I'll be quick. Um, we do have a number of openings in our department. It has nothing to do with health. It's an overall comment about the public services department. As you know, we have 25 people in eight divisions, so it's spread throughout. But thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Jean. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sean Grant, Franklin Street. Um, the, the liaison reports that I saw tonight were a good example of, I think, how liaison reports are supposed to work, which is reporting out not only to the board, but to the public about all the things going on in the dozens of different boards and committees we have. Um, I wanted to make an observation about a particular liaison report from the last board of selectmen meeting, or select board meeting, excuse me, on June 19th. Um, uh, Mr. Halsey's report on the Recreation Committee, which he joined on June 12th, read as follows. Quote, since our last meeting I visited the Recreation Committee, there was really two key items that they were talking about. He goes on to talk about a discussion around playground rules uh, and another discussion around identifying a member for the Merchant Meadows Subcommittee. Um, he picks up, quote, and that's pretty much it as far as what's going on with recreation, end quote. Um, what he omitted from that, I was hoping that in his comments at the beginning of the meeting tonight he was going to get there, but what he omitted from that is that he spent a good portion of that meeting berating and threatening to sue members of the Recreation Committee for having requested a new liaison, uh, a, a request that he acknowledged tonight is a reasonable one and probably one that's time to consider. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. I think we should think about liaison reports as uh, an important vehicle to be comprehensive in communication with the town, even when it doesn't reflect well on, on the individuals delivering those reports. Thank you, Sean. We'll be discussing that at 9. I hope uh, you can stay for those discussions. It's only a 15-minute block. I, I, I would like to have a further discussion about, um, you know, how we get places and when, when things go, uh, perhaps in, a, in the inc incorrect direction, um, how can we can prevent those in the future. But that'll have to wait until another meeting. I'm sorry. Anyone else? Yes. My name is Dan Doerr. I live at 519 Main Street. And I, I got a question about the last meeting. I, I watched it twice um, regarding the um, Board of Health appointments. Yes. Um, it seemed to me that Heidi Pfeiffer resigned because she couldn't um, make, make the meetings. And um, Emmy Dove, who, who wanted to be appointed, through her application because she couldn't make the meetings. Um, 
you seem to have elevated every dove to a full <coughs> member, but you didn't show the same um, sense with, with, with Heidi Pfeiffer. Why, why didn't you um, ask her and, and tell the board to, to make arrangements so that she can make the meetings and stay a full, a full member? It, it seemed like you demoted her and, and it doesn't. It didn't seem to be fair to me. I, I, I just like to know what your thought process was on that. So I'm going to ask one of the vast members to respond. Sure. The volunteer um, appointment subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, it, the meeting schedule had become an issue for uh, Heidi. Uh, she voluntarily requested that she be lowered to associate. She was originally going to just leave. And then she came back and said, how about if I be associate? So she had made that decision already. So there was no demotion involved here. That was purely a request that came from her. My point being that the, the, the not being able to make the meetings, it was more important to put somebody else on that couldn't also make the meetings. You didn't show her the same you know, elements. To, well, I, to I tried to make the, the parallel argument that the two are in somewhat the same situation. Right. And they should be associates. So exactly. the board had That's, other views. <laughs> right. And then you, it seemed like you were kind of bullied into uh, pointing uh, at me, though. Uh, I don't get bullied. <laughs> yeah. Everybody Thank seemed to be tied, and, it's, and it just happened. Right. And, and uh, it just didn't seem uh, a fair process to Thank you. Dan. Thank you. Anyone else? In the back. Hi, Demetra Secker, Center Street. Um, Barry, you stole my thunder a tiny bit because I was going to talk about your son's film. Oh. But um, <laughs> specifically the last five minutes of it, I did watch it. It is very good. I hope if you haven't seen it, you'll watch it. Um, the last five minutes are quite compelling because uh, Jake rides around with a number of different officers. In the last one, they went to a call and it ended up being nothing. And then um, the officer started to talk about how that sometimes happens, uh, unfortunately, where sometimes there might be a Verizon worker, fully logoed, red Verizon logo, credentials from the police, clipboard, the whole thing. But they'll get a suspicious person call, and the person, the police officer said, is a person of <coughs> It happens with boys playing soccer. Well, they all end up being brown. And the police officer said that. So he pointed that out because they were passing a hate has no home here sign, which of course has become sort of a whatever. But it kind of jogged his memory and he wanted to talk about that. Because the frustrating thing is that then a lot of people say the police are being racist when they respond to that call. Yeah, yeah. And he made the point that mm. they have to go to every single one of those calls, of course, if you think about it, you know that. So I want to do three things by standing up. The first is I want to commend Jake and that police officer for just having that conversation. I want to commend Chief Sagala because he had to vet the film and you know, uh, it's tricky to talk about it. And he said, no, put it out there. And I, I appreciate that about him. And then the third thing is that I hope that the board can find a way to either ask HRAC or yourselves, take this up with the chief and dive into it a little bit and see if there's a way to further educate the public that, you know, there's a black guy working for Verizon, knocking on doors, doing what white guys do that that's not scary, you yeah. know, that there are ways of sort of reading it differently. Yeah. So I would encourage that. I hope that everyone at home will watch the film because right. it's quite good. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Uh, Jake told, gave me a preview of his film on at the library uh, party, and I, I too heard that. So um, HRAC, we'll be asking a lot of HRAC this, this year. So for the people who signed up, Oh, and there are four more associate positions available. There are four yeah. more associate positions on yeah. HRAC. Yeah. We're uh, very excited about their new membership. Yeah. Uh, to, to your new members of yes. former HR people. Uh, Human resources uh, folks. Yeah. Right. So um, I'm going to, unless someone is dying to make a public yes. comment. I am. <laughs> if you don't mind having a town manager report. Um, I can chop it up, but there's some things I really need to say before the agenda item. So you, yes. you decide. Do you want me to do it all? I, had, I told I'm you sorry. I had eight things. You, you have eight things. It won't um, take that long, though. 
Uh, okay. Um, I'll go quick. I'm, I'm okay with it. Doing it now? Yeah. Um, right. I, re I recognize that we're a half an hour behind in the schedule. Hey, you're you're better than we were last that, that week. Is <laughs> not, that is not how... You can make it up. You know, I, I, um, I will do a, we'll do better next time. Firstly, uh, on your July 31st agenda at approximately 8.15, the Board of Cemetery Trustees will come in to have a further discussion um, about their new policy just to let the whole town know. Right. Um, I'm sorry that, Barry, you just made a comment because now it's public, but you and Vanessa can't meet tomorrow. Um, I wasn't aware you are going to meet that fast. Um, your communication subcommittee, since that's the way you formed it, has to be posted with 48 hours notice. Your official staff. Our staff knew that, and I assumed you would go through <laughs> them in order to set up a meeting, so that's why Our I didn't bad. bother to tell you in advance. Oh, so if you happen to run into each other tomorrow, it's fine, but I've Talk told you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was going to cancel anyway. So tired. <laughs> the the uh, ABCC um, has uh, allegedly caught one of our restaurants on May 22nd so selling to a minor. Today they had a hearing. Um, I'll pass along any further news to the board. I don't want to say any more at this time. Um, at a meeting last week with uh, Andy, Vanessa, uh, Jean, and Matt Cornellis, Andy made what I thought was a really good suggestion to invite Matt in uh, for an, as an agenda item so that the community can meet the ombudsman and understand the role of the ombudsman. I think that was a really good, a good suggestion. Um, he also asked me to clarify um, how a board member should communicate with either town council and or employees. Um, I don't really mind one way or the other, but I will tell you that both town council and employees in their reply to any of you will copy me, so it's easier if you just send it to me also when you first make contact. As I've said to the board, if you want to discuss anything with department heads, I'm fine with that. If for some reason you want to discuss me, I would suggest you do that with the town accountants uh, being copied instead of me. I'm fine with that as well. Um, I have a legislative update. Uh, it's been difficult to pin down our three elected officials, but it looks like October 2nd they will be in here. I just wanted to make sure you had that on your calendar. Um, uh, and October 2nd? Yes. That'll be confirmed. Um, Jimmy Dwyer's pretty sure, but not positive. Um, I wanted to let you know, and the town clerk's here to uh, verify the name select board is now official. It's been approved uh, by the state. It's been advertised as she needed to do legally. Um, you are now that board. Uh, with your permission, we'll start to make changes that I had discussed a few meetings ago. That would be great. Right. Thanks. Um, let's see. Uh, on August 21st, I'd like to make sure that the board knows there'll be an important discussion about downtown parking with a consultant from Nelson Nygaard. It's a preview, and it will lead into an October 24th public discussion. Not that the public's not welcome, uh, but if you could especially let me know your expected attendance in August, that would be very helpful. So it's a preliminary uh, discussion about downtown parking on August 21st, and October 24th will much more advertise this as a community event. I think it's, it's pretty important. Um, and that was on October uh, uh, August 21st. August 21st. Um, the thing that I need to say, and that, that Barry may want to make some comments, um, and I needed to do this before the Rotary Club got up, um, I had sent the board an email, and it was part of your packet, um, at the end of June. Um, the town manager has a reserve fund. Um, normally, I leave a lot of surplus. I don't spend it. Uh, but in this case, I had two items that I thought were important. The $4,000, uh, if you will, a Fall Street Fair electricity safety setup is an item I could have afforded within the budget, and I wouldn't normally ask the board for permission. Um, but in this case, I thought it was important. I've, I vetted it through legal, through procurement, that I just make a statement, and I filed with the town clerk that uh, Sartell Electric that's provided the quote has also done work in my house. So just to put that out there. Um, the other item is a phase two for wayfinding. Uh, Barry was involved in phase one, which we received a grant for. Um, I was able to have sufficient funding primarily because of the legal surplus to set aside $12,500. Um, it would be my desire to proceed with that. Um, but I believe since this line item is under my care and control and this, this 12500 would put it over budget that I should get your permission. Uh, I don't legally need to do that. It's fine. The town accountant was fine with it, but I thought it was proper to ask. So if you're okay with those two expenses, um, I'd ask you to make a motion and approve it. Um, so you, uh, 
to have them written out? Or? Sorry, no. <laughs> okay. Just to approve these two line items as presented. Are we going to have a longer discussion regarding the wayfinding? Not tonight. Depends. I hope. I mean, w w yes, we'll have a discussion. But yeah, I mean, Barry knows a little more about it, having yeah. been on the committee. So. Yeah, I mean, just as um, so, s you want to make a motion. And uh, I'll, I'll make I'll make the motion to um, uh, take twelve thousand five hundred uh, for wayfinding phase two and four thousand uh, for the Fall Street Fair electric safety setup to be paid from the town manager's um, revolving revolving fund. fund. I was going to say slush fund. Yeah, you uh, can say revolving that. fund. <laughs> Do I, do Second. I reserve or revolve? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Reserve. Yeah, it's reserve. Right. Yeah. Reserve. Okay. Good Second. Catch. So discussion. Yeah. I mean, I can talk about. I mean, I can talk about the wayfinding really quick. It was a tremendous process that um, you recall that Julie Mercier got this really highly coveted right. grant, and we brought in business people, public yeah. safety people, um, folks from across the town to basically kind of rebrand Reading. Uh, you know, sort of in terms of signage, the, the whole idea is to get people sort of downtown with parking to show people where it was so that they just don't drive by our downtown. You recall, I think in January, we actually approved sort of the concept of it. This is sort of the phase two, which is implementing it. Um, and I think um, from the background, Bob, that you provided, um, some of that is for the signage, some of it is to actually get this group and maybe expand this group again to sort of figure out you know, wh where do we want to put what, you know, how we want to direct people here. It's really, this is really probably the most important part of it. The first part was sort of the concept and the design, which we got a lot of rave reviews for. Now it's just sort of putting it in process. So it's, it's um, this is to pay for the uh, Mark Faberman, who was the consultant that we used in phase one, who I think, you know, out of all the things that I've gone through in public uh, service, he really ran a great sort of workshop and got us thinking in the right direction to the point where we can come up with concepts that I don't think we would have gotten to on our own. So it was a, it was a great experience and, um, and I'm sure the downtown businesses are going to be excited because it's really going to start directing people there, right, to create excitement uh, and especially as we develop new housing down there. Um, so, um, you know, not a lot of money for a big thing. Thanks. I, Vanessa? I have a question. Um, so I, I looked through it, loved the idea and the concept. Um, signage is always a wonderful thing. Um, but Reading's colors are red, black, and white. So I understand the desire to rebrand. I'm just questioning whether all of Reading now is going to be associated with these new branding colors that have been determined by this consulting company because they clash pretty significantly. I realize colors may not seem like a big deal, but our, all of our schools are, are branded with this. I mean, we're the Red Rockets, it's red, um, and so it doesn't, they, they just don't complement each other. Not to stop this allocation of funding, but I'm just curious if that was ever discussed at any point. Actually, so, so, my, uh, uh, so my, my thought on this was, um, First, Bob, the work product of this for this twelve thousand dollars is not to actually make signs, correct? It's I would have to, to get you design, the actual design the signs. I, I, we I have read, the designs. I read through it. Okay. Um, so, so you know, taking into consideration both of your comments, uh, th this this will be a this will have a significant impact of, on the look of Reading. So. Um, I'd, I'd like to propose a, a friendly amendment to wait on the, this next step of implementation for wayfinding uh, until town meeting, um, which is a more, which is a larger representative body than, than, than the five of us, um, and, and have them weigh on it before we, and, and, and provide feedback. Um, yes, we've, we've provided feedback, but I think town meeting is uh, a much larger group of Reading residents and, and get their buy-in on such a big color change. Actually, this is not changing the colors of Reading. Um, it, it, it's just sort of the, the branding of the downtown. And I do recall this was presented at town meeting. Um, you know, it wasn't any vote on it, but I think it was overwhelmingly um, sort of... Uh, People really liked the idea, and and in, and, in, and in fact, actually, one of the things that came up in the first uh, in the first round is that people specifically did not want to go 
to the red, white, and black. Because when people asked, when the, when the consultant asked, well, what is Reading known for? Well, we have the Reading Rockets in sports. Okay, well, so does in Woburn, Wakefield, Melrose. So what makes you different? And quickly, within probably 15 minutes, red, white, and black was completely off the table. Um, and so um, that, that was a pretty powerful um, process. Um, I, 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 think it's, I think it's foolish to wait. Um, we have this highly, um, th this coveted consultant who's going to do the work. People were really excited about, um, you know, sort of getting this in place. I, I, I think for short money, um, we can really move forward, especially as our downtown development. Um, those business owners are clamoring for getting people to, to you know, to, to come there, and this is a key piece to it. So, I mean, I, I, you said it's a friendly amendment. I don't, I, I, I don't think it's that friendly. Well, if he doesn't accept it, you'd have to make it. Yeah, I, it was, I think I needed to get a second on the friendly. Dan? Uh, did I second this? He, he didn't accept, so I don't. I can't accept. Okay. Okay. Um, you can make the motion for an amendment if you want to. That's um, within your power. Well, I'd like to hear from the rest of the board, John and and and, and Dan. What are your thoughts? I think this this is sort of a de minimis situation, mm -hmm. uh, and this has been well explained to the community. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a timeliness that you trade off for the inform performance of mm -hmm. time, which I, mm -hmm. under normal circumstances, say, yeah, absolutely, that takes preeminence. Yeah. And since this will fall in was within a, a reserve fund that's already been designated for yeah. situations uh, like this, uh, I, I'm comfortable with proceeding with the expenditure. John, I think acting on the consultant and moving forward I you know I've witnessed his work yeah. it's exceptional um, we string him out to October we'll never get him I, I think we're I personally think we shoot ourselves in the foot I mean things like colors can be I, mean, I think that gets worked out I mean payment when you pay in a consultant you pay him to do what you ask him to do and you know so uh, I don't think the consultant is going to tell you what color something is. The consultant is going to offer suggestions and get the work moving down the road. You need the funding to do that. I would strongly suggest we move forward with Barry's, um, you know, motion to fund these two items out of the uh, town manager's revolving account. I retract my concern. Okay, <laughs> then, I then to, I'd like to. Um, are we ready to vote? Is the board ready to vote on this issue? Do we have a second? Second. We had a, yeah. I think Dan yeah. seconded yeah. Barry, yeah. Barry's motion. So, all in favor of? Um, did, did you copy down the motion? No. Sorry. We're, we're transitioning. Barry made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Could you read it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, motion to approve. Uh, Twelve thousand five hundred for wayfinding, four thousand for Paul Street Fair Electric from the new town manager's reserve book. All in favor? Five zero. Zero. Five zero zero. Okay, thank you. Okay, next time. Um, yeah. <coughs> um, so next up on the agenda um, is a seven fifteen discussion. Um, on H4290, an act to promote housing choices. Uh, we, we got some communication from the, um, uh, uh, the Massachusetts Municipal Association on this, and they, their recommendation was that um, local government support this because it will um, provide local governments with more flexibility in how to implement um, 40B projects. So uh, actually, the, yeah. the, the bill, the bill that's in question, Mr. Chair, is that, um, and we and we were, I mean, cities and towns have been requested by Mass Municipal to support House Bill 4290, which is part of the governor's housing production bill, and the key piece of this legislation is that it lowers the threshold by which you need to make zoning um, uh, amendments for, this, for, for housing. So right now, if you remember when we did 4DR, um, or any kind, of zone, any kind of zoning change, it required two-thirds vote of town meeting. 
What this right. bill does is that it makes it across the board, sort of part of the statute, you just need 50% plus one. For specific types of development. Right, for, right. for, for like things like smart district growth, um, and it promotes housing. Now there are some amendments that Mass Municipal is asking us to sort of, they're asking us to contact our legislators and, and mm -hmm. to support 4290 in its entirety without, um, without amendments. There are some amendments that are in there um, by some pro-housing groups that want to make kind of 40B requirements across the board for all cities and towns, therefore giving, giving us less sort of flexibility in doing it. The only reason why I bring it up here to the board is because I think we've done the right thing. Um, we've met our legal and moral obligation to provide affordable housing. We don't need the state to tell us what to do. What we do need is the ability to make it easier for us to implement our own housing production plan, which we're probably one of the few, Gene, you, can, you know this better than I, that we actually have a housing production plan. There are many towns that are like us that don't. So we've done it sort of under the constrictions of some of these state regulations. What 4290 does is that it allows housing to be created it eases that sort of that, that um, requirement to get two thirds to 50% plus one. Um, and we know how to do the housing that we wanted it um, and to have the control. So we've been requested by Mass Municipal um, to contact our legislators. I don't know if we want to do that in the, f I asked them if they had a form letter. It's just easier than for us to write one if we wanted to, to make a motion or, or take, a, take a vote. Um, as a board that supports 4290 so that we can convey it to our uh, to Senator Lewis, um, Representative Jones, and Representative Wire. Dan. Yeah. Uh, Barry, for your discussions, is it your understanding that uh, the governor's bill, if enacted, would supersede the other actions pending before the legislature? Uh, or are they, if they, could they still pass the more strength, you know, it's the things that even more take over local home rule in addition to I this. think when I when I spoke to the MMA staff it was kind of like they were, some of those attempts were being attached to the 4290 bill yeah um, and so the request is ask our legislators to support 4290, 4290 so there's not, un a not a separate yeah, bill no, no, un un okay right. unamended yeah. so yeah. Um, I, I think you know we haven't no one's had to tell us what to do how to yeah. how to do it and, and what, what the right thing to do is we've done it here in Reading I'm really proud to play a part of it, as I'm sure you all have. This is just going to allow us to do it a little bit better. Yeah, I, the, I mean, I had to dumb it down for myself. Um, it, it seemed odd at first to, to just require a majority vote to change zoning in town when, when one would want, seem to want, a two-thirds majority, so we're really certain about the zoning change that we make. Uh, my understanding, though, is that um, if we, I have to be careful with my words, but I'll just say it, if, if we don't show the state that we're making it easier to make zoning changes, um, that the state will then just make that decision at the state level and take it out of out of local hands. Is that the yeah, and, reading and that you got from that? It? Really rankles me, Andy. That the state always does this to us. They, I think they use the blunderbuss approach. I'll be frank on 40B, yeah. uh, threatening to overtake our zoning, and in yeah. many cases they do that. Uh, it's as if to say to us, the cities and towns, you people don't know how to govern yourselves. You don't know how to provide affordable housing. We're going to force it down your throats. In this case, it sounds like the governor's bill is the lesser of the evils, although it, I don't like lowering this requirement. I do trust town meeting to make these decisions, and it, if it yeah. takes a two-thirds, let the debate happen and let them attain the two-thirds. Yeah. It's a very important thing when you change zoning. Uh, so I really get rankled right. when I read stuff like this. But the reality is uh, the state is the state. And yeah. They can do worse things to us. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that that we're a little, un we're unusual. Most cities and towns, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, um, have not really done a great job at achieving their 10%. So um, sort of we're, we're being punished for the actions of others. But John, Vanessa? Um, yeah, I, I have some thoughts on this. First of all, um, I I tend to, I really agree with Dan. I, I think that, and I agree with Barry as well, that we've done a good job. We know how to do it. We have done this. We have done it by 
current situation, which calls for two thirds plus one vote. Mm -hmm. And honestly speaking, you know, I think that you know, to your comments, that gives the people who are town meeting members, you know, much more local control. And I'm a, I'm a very large advocate of local control. And <clears throat> frankly, I tend to not be interested in taking a position on state initiatives when we're doing our thing. I mean, our job is here. Yes. Our job is, you know, to the constituents in this room and out there having fun on a summer evening. I mean, it. I mean, we do live in the Commonwealth, and I, and yeah. I get that, and it, we need to be cooperative. But honestly speaking, you know, I, I, I would abstain from such a vote here. For the very simple reason that I think it's out, a I think it's outside our purview. I think it's intrusive for you know Mass Municipal to try to really strong arm us. And frankly, when I look at this, there's some concerns I have. We have had over the last four or five years a number of projects that have shown up here under 40B, for example. Um, one of the primary problems is parking. One of the first giveaways in this program is parking. And you get to now do it with, you know, 50% plus one instead of a two thirds majority. I actually think that the people in our town need to have, you know, you mentioned greater representation earlier. Yeah. I do believe this is not for Reading. And I would therefore not vote against it, but I would abstain from voting on this particular measure. I would not want to endorse it as a body. That's my opinion. Yeah, John, I have to agree with what you said, except that I don't think the MMA was really trying to strong arm us. I think it's their honest opinion that, that this will help prevent worse things from coming down the pike. But it's, it's uh, you're sort of, it's sort of a game of chicken. Well, I've gotten um, eight emails from the MMA yeah. in the last two months. Yeah. On this, I mean, I got a, f a few more. I got, you know, there's, there is, I have gotten eight emails that are either focused on this or mentioning this. Yeah. I feel like, you know, I'm on their ad campaign. And I don't think that that's the reason that, I personally don't think that's the reason they're there. But, you know, that's a, that happens to be, you know, a personal opinion. Uh, and, and honestly speaking, I, I don't think that this is necessarily a good thing for Reading. I'm not saying it's a bad thing for other communities that don't understand how important it is. Look, we've had a couple of 40-hour rezoning moves here over the course of the last eight or nine years. And the last one was a major one. Yep. And it was really important. And it was a collaborative effort of education that came out of the CPDC, the Board of Selectmen, and a lot of concerned and interested citizens. And then it found its way to town meeting. And it was discussed, you know. Extensively. Extensively and actively. And when all was said and done, there was a vote of over 80%. You know, in that's, favor. That's the way it should be. I think that's the process. I so, mean, cutting, taking a shortcut, I don't think is a good yeah. idea. And I, for one, will not vote in favor of this. I no, I, I, Mr. I only brought it up because um, I mean, I, I, I like that MM, the Mass Municipal, is really they, they do look out for sort of issues for cities and towns. Um, you know, we didn't need the, the the hammer to to do what we wanted to do. Um, you know, they requested it to you know to discuss it at, at your local things. That's why I brought it up. Um, we're going to do the right thing, no matter right. what. Um, this just makes it easier for the rest of the world to catch up. So, I just brought it up for informational purposes. It sounds like there's no appetite to kind of move on it, but um. John, I actually shared your concerns regarding the parking in this piece, um, especially for a community like Reading. Yes. Um, so I, I agree with you there. Uh, I think realistically, we're between a rock and a hard place yeah, here. Um, I, I don't see, you know, the, the state has to function um, with the least common denominator in mind. Yeah. And that may not be Reading, but we'll be subject to it regardless. Um, I would be concerned about the message it might send if we don't support this initiative. Um, 
in that regardless of what we are doing with our 40R and our, and our rezoning there, um, that by, vote, by not supporting this, we could be seen as anti-housing. Right. Um, so that's my only reservation. I, I know that we'll, we're running a li little late, but there are a lot of members in the community tonight, and so I'm just going to give us five minutes to, to, if anyone would like to speak up regarding this issue. It is, it is essentially supporting a bill that would make it easier for a town meeting to pass bylaw changes, zoning bylaw changes. It would just take a majority, simple majority vote versus a two-thirds vote. I think it also lowers the supermajority requirement on CPDC for certain special permits that yeah. have to be enacted to the yeah. majority. And, and, and the concept is do we vote and support it and hoping to prevent worse things coming down the pike or not? Bill. Well, uh, I'm serving town meeting member alone. Let's keep the two-thirds. Keep the state of the health of Boston and let us keep out of our state. <laughs> Anyone in their other town? And by the way, Mr. Uh, Chairman, there are no abstention votes and there are no zero votes. <laughs> I'm sorry? Leave out the last no zero. No abstention votes and there are no zero votes. So when you record it, it's either by nothing or uh, it's president nothing. voting. Thanks, Bill. No abstention votes. Five nothing. Or no zero votes. Right. Okay. Robert's rules, right? Yeah. Fincom notwithstanding. Don't yes. forget the Robert's rules. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah I, I, I reviewed those this morning. Um, there are other town meeting members here tonight. I'm not going to call you out, but would you like to say something? Yes. I agree. Make it as hard as possible. Keep us in charge as best you can. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Um, What's what's the feeling of the board given given this discussion? I mean, I only brought it up just to, for more informational. All right. to, to see if there was appetite. There's not. I suggest we table it and move on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, would you like to make a motion, John? No. Um, so you don't have to make a motion for table. Right. Good. I think um, we just bang the hammer and call next. Yeah, something yeah. on the table. So. I, I have Robert's rules up here, but by the time I find it, it'll. Uh, okay. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, no, you lean on me for that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Fall Street Fair Rotary Club update and preview. I apologize um, that we're um, 52 minutes late for you, but we look forward to hearing from you. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm Greg right. Johnson from Washington Street, 168. Sheila Clark, 536 Hebel Street. So we thought, by the invitation of the town manager, thank you, um, as well as the board, that it would be great for the community to learn a little bit more about the Reading Fall Street Fair as a beloved event. I know many people know about it, but I don't think many people know that it was actually taken over by the Reading Rotary um, as of last year. So we thought it would be great to let people know a little bit about the Rotary, why they took it over, and where the fair is today. So that is what our intent is. Thanks. So I'm going to let Greg start with Rotary. He was Retroit Rotarian of the Year, by the way, just saying. I'm sorry? He was Rotarian of the Year. Hey. Rotarian. In, in Reading, we're like all over like the planet. In the district. I like to tell people the, the world. Entire, <laughs> but it, 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 the, oh. our, club, our club here in Reading of 40 people voted for me. So. Can you make that a, a little larger for, for old eyes, I, maybe just by getting rid of the right, right panel? Oh, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah. Is that a touch yeah, yeah. <laughs> So our motto, uh, our motto in uh, Rotary is service above self, because um, we believe in our community and servicing and helping um, our community become better. Uh, through Rotary International, um, Reading Rotary Club joins over 1.2 million Rotarians in the world, um, 33,000 clubs worldwide. Um, we partner with the Gates Foundation, uh, the UNICEF, and the CDC in an effort to make uh, polio uh, the only second infectious disease eradicated, and we're very close to doing that. Um, oh. Oh. So, over the last 
two years we've raised over $95,000. Um, the majority of that money goes back into our community. Uh, it's 62% actually went back into the community uh, this last year. Um, things like the Reading Food Pantry, uh, the Reading Scholarship Foundation, we have our own scholarship awards that we give to high school students every year. Um, purchase of a wheelchair accessible van to help the disabled and elderly residents of Reading. Um, purchase and support of defibrillators, I mean fire department. Um, a number of years ago, the town of Rank came to us and asked us if we could help with the Adopt a Family program, which is a wonderful program. If you don't know what it is, it's at the at holiday time, uh, Thanksgiving. We um, get donors and we put them together with needy recipients in town, and we give them a Thanksgiving basket. Um, and then and we do the same thing for, for a Christmas meal, um, as well as gifts for children under 18. Um, the uh, the program has been a wonderful program, and it's one of the things that the Rotarians like to be at most. Um, we work in conjunction with uh, the DPW um, is where we, where we take and receive and, and, uh, and give out the gifts. Um, so that's been a great program. Uh, we purchased a Reading High School uh, band golf cart. Um, we've uh, helped Reading Education Fund, and we do every year. Um, recently we had uh, well, not recently, four years ago, we were asked um, when the Booster Club disbanded to take over the, uh, the running snack shack down at the football field. Um, this has been um, a volunteer effort. It's been a great program. We've been able to uh, purchase over $6,000 worth of equipment down there. Uh, last year, we helped and we purchased a new roof for the building. Um, but it's, it's kind of a nice event for us because instead of us putting our hands into people's pockets, we're actually providing a service. Um, and we do we do make some money that, that helps us get back to the community. So those are just some of the things that we've done. So I don't know if everyone knows, but the Reading Trawl Street Fair, this is the 10th annual year, which is wonderful. It was started in 2008 underneath the Economic Development Committee in town. And it actually was not meant to be, um, we never had any idea it was going to be as big as it was. It turned out to be, it was started as, I should say, um, a celebration of when we did the revitalization of the downtown with all the bollards that everybody loved so much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. Now they'll, now they'll pick on the colors. Um, yes, and now, they'll, now they'll, I, I didn't want to say that the EDC at our time also went through a wayfinding project, so I feel your pain. <laughs> uh, but all that is good is new again. Um, so that's actually how the event started. I mean, I could could not be more proud. I've had the privilege of being one of the first co-chairs for the event and to continue to be one today. So it's just an amazing event. What was so phenomenal about it, in my opinion, is it just brought every single demographic in this community together. It was, you know, local restaurants, retail businesses, seniors, juniors. It, it didn't matter. It was just a wonderful day that everybody came out for that really, truly grew to be rivaled by surrounding communities all around. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have told me how wonderful an event that it is, you know, from outside of Reading. Um, when the EDC was sunset, the it was um, then organized by a town committee, which was both consisted of staff and volunteers. Um, it continued to flourish and grow, which was wonderful, and it just made it more, um, excuse me, more difficult to implement under town committee regulations, open meeting law, all of the things that this type of event, it's just, when I say to you, it starts six months of planning ahead of time. It's just massive. It really is. There are so many different components <coughs> to it and committees and people that you need to be able to give their time and you need to have access to them. So it just didn't work underneath those guidelines. So then the Rotary was approached um, by town representatives to see if they would be interested in taking over the fair because they had been so wonderful in years past and taking over so many initiatives. Um, and I will say we, they <laughs> initially, were thrilled to help and to ensure that the amazing community event would continue because that's what it is. This type of <coughs> event, when you have a partner like somebody like the Rotary, you want to see it continue. You know, you need to be able to give them the capacity to do so um, because it does take a lot of people, to say the least. Excuse me, I'm just trying to get to the next one. Oh. Sheila, just to interrupt you, interrupt you for a second, you might want to move that mic, which is the RCTV mic, the, the, uh, this there. One? This one? Yeah, closer to you so people watching at home can hear you. Okay. And I, I, don't, I don't know if people, can everyone hear her in the back okay? We good? Okay. okay. Okay, great. Okay, excellent. Thanks. 
Um, so last year's event under the Rotary was one of the best yet, 15,000 attendees. It was just an absolutely stunning day as far as weather is concerned, and you know it, the fair just keeps continuous and to grow, which is wonderful. But with growth also come expenses. So that's really where we're starting to struggle a little bit as to how to manage that. So you know, we had a wonderful DRT with the town manager and all the heads of the departments to talk about how we can partner to go further in doing that. Um, you know, We really need to be able to look at our options to minimize costs going forward. Where can we find efficiencies on both parts? Um, you know, you want to make sure that this event continues, um, but there has to be some kind of um, partnership in order to do so, for lack of a better word. So, you know, we are just looking to be able to get back all of the organizations. All the proceeds that we raise from the fair does go back to the organizations within Reading. So in order to be able to continue to do all the wonderful work that they do, that's why we need some help with the fair. So we were looking to um, really just learn about how, what the thoughts were from the board as well as the town manager to really see how we could do, be more efficient and find out what some options were as far as funding or um, you know any type of in-kind situation would be available. The Reading Rotary itself, though, most importantly, needs volunteers. So I, it's my call to arms for everybody to please. Um, there are many, many different ways that you can volunteer a day of, get on a committee, um, you know, just make a donation, whatever works for you, um, to ensure that the affair does go forward. Sheila, I just um, thank you. Uh, to both of you for the presentation. I just want to note uh, two, three things. One, thank you very much to the Rotary for taking this over. It, 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 it does great things for our town. First of all, you get, it's the only time of year I get fried dough. <laughs> and and, and it, I think it attracts a lot of people to come and see Reading, which it is, which is um, sort of an immeasurable benefit for that. And, and the third thing it does is, is help raise money for the Rotary, and then the Rotary uses all of that money to pour it back into the town, some of which, like defibrillators for the fire department, uh, the town may have to uh, pony up mm -hmm. for that. So, so I, I'd like to ask you in what ways the town can help uh, the, the Rotary um, this year. You know, please. Well, you know, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's just. You know, financial. Um, I think it's. And it, I think it's already begun at the at having that initial DRT, um, mm -hmm. and we're subsequently going to be meeting. You know, with Mark Sagala, um, you know, Greg Burns, um, DPW. Um, but you know, any way that you know we can get some of those, um, you know, fees, um, you know, reduced would certainly help. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Greg. You know, it's not. It is not just financial. Financial is the biggest piece of it. That's what you think of first. The partnership and collaboration is first and foremost important. This event can't happen. You have to yeah. be able to work together in order to make sure it's a successful event. Um, from a financial standpoint, you know, again, the town departments who do a wonderful job, an absolutely wonderful job in helping us prep for it as well as day of. Um, there are basically expense because that's it's an off. It's a Sunday and it's a, a time and a half day, and yeah. that's just the way the reality of the fair. So wherever we can find some ability there to find some efficiencies you know in what we are able to do I strongly believe that this is a Reading Fall Street Fair and the town of Reading should have um, a, a piece of it and own a piece skin of it exactly in skin in the game sure absolutely um, because it is and it, it's been going on for 10 years and I hope I truly hope it goes on for another 10 um, but it needs to be a collaborative effort well I'm, I'm glad that it's it's so far been a collaborative effort that's great and I'm, I'm sure Bob uh, will continue to make it such. Bob, are there any ways, well I should actually ask for input from the board before I talk, raise any ideas. Thoughts folks? How we can help them? I mean, I don't think we're the best suited to offer up suggestions since none of us have actually planned the Fall Street Fair. Um, but if um, you, Sheila, having been involved, or the Rotary has specific ideas of how the town, town might be supportive, um, I mean, I, I'd certainly be willing to listen and see, you know, seek Bob's input um, on how that would work. Um, I personally have no specific suggestions for you, um, but I, I'd definitely be all ears. 
I don't, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, actually, I could go on and on about this. Um, you know, first of all, the Fall Street Fair is, you know, the mountaintop opportunity yeah. in this town to yeah. attract people, to improve commerce, to create neighborly interchanges that would never happen under any other circumstances. It, so the event itself stands, you know, as a premier mountaintop opportunity that needs to be continued and fostered at every cost. The fact that the Reading Rotary Club has stepped up to take on the massive responsibilities is a game changer. Because let's just be real, I mean, at a certain point in time, <coughs> The Fall Street Fair was really in serious jeopardy, yeah. and it was in serious jeopardy. I mean, we were worried about you know operating expenses in this town. We were worried about overrides. We were worried about you know programs being eliminated. We were worried about not having enough police and fire. And so, for the town to embrace the 100 percent of the cost and try to make it all work was frankly folly, in my opinion. So the fact that we had an independent nonprofit organization that is Reading based to step forward and collaborate across the board, you know, I noticed a few things that were up on the board about what Rotary does. Now here's a reality. You know, Rotary supports fifty different organizations in this town. And so when that happens, when that happens financially, it's intangible value is huge. And I say that because, you know, an organization like Rotary does a series of things that create small pockets of money. And then, in this case, they've agreed to abandon one that was delivering a very large amount of money, which really helped fund their donative intent and their philanthropic endeavors. And so, when they really took a leap of faith as a as a local nonprofit organization, a service organization, um, and they took a big load, as far as I'm concerned, off the town. Yeah. Now, um, part of the load, you know, is the infrastructure of the expense. Right. And so, it's there for sure. Um, and you know, some of them are hard dollars, and some of them are soft dollars. And I think what, as a town, we need to do is take a hard look at the entire scope of the costs involved from the town side and see how much is hard dollars and how much is soft dollars and see how we can partner with the Rotary. Because they're partnering with us. Yeah. They're making our town a better place to be because of, of the scores of organizations locally that they're supporting with right. anything from $100 to $1,000 to tens of thousands of dollars over the course of time. You know, uh, Greg, you did a nice job of talking about that list, but I know what's behind that. three more pages. I would not let him do all three pages. The amount of involvement that Rotary has at so many different levels in this town makes our job easier, makes this town run better, makes it be a better place. So I think we need to, you know, be as encouraging as possible and partner as much as we're able. So for example, I think tonight we took an important step forward. There's a $4,000 panel that needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. That could have been an expense that, you know, could have fallen on Rotary and that would have been, I think, shame on us mm -hmm. as a town yeah. because it's a piece of infrastructure that actually allows for something that goes forward and can go forward on a regular and safe basis. So the fact that Bob stepped forward and said, hey, here's a place we can fund that. This yeah. is what we need to right. do. We need Je to be extremely creative about that. Yeah. I, 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 the take home message for me from what you said is that um, perhaps the board should take a look at the finances of the I cost to the town of the uh, of the Fall Street Fair and see where we could help out with, with that. Barry? Um, thanks, Mr. Chair. I would imagine, I mean, um, maybe at some point when we get further down, we can kind of take a deeper dive into the budget um, in terms of what the expenses are. I would imagine, I could be wrong, that the biggest expenses you have are probably for the police, fire, and, and DPW yeah. overtime. I mean, those are 
those are union. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we can't. I mean, we can't say we're not going to pay you. We then we have to just say, well, the town is going to absorb that. Sure. I, I think that's the kind of thing. If, and 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 that. Am I wrong that that's the biggest part? Oh no, it definitely is. So, you know, and then what happens is if you know, uh, and I've been on the boards of some of the things that you fund. So, you know, hear me. I, I we're blessed that you guys are here and have done it. One of the things I worry about is if we take on some of those kinds of expenses, well, then we have, just thinking, we have, um, you know, Friends of Reading Recreation, we have Samantha's Harvest, we have, you know, name 50 more who do a road race that need police, you know, kind of escorts. And so, well, you did it for the fall fair, why not do it for us? We set a precedent. Um, so that kind of participation, I think, um, while it might not, you know, while it might help a little bit, uh, in terms of that just frees up dollars so that you can give it out to the different organizations that benefit Reading. I think it gets us down a path that it, it's it, it's kind of hard to get back up from. Mm -hmm. So I, I would be happy to sit down and maybe look at some of your other sort of infrastructure costs, see if there's ways that we can do that, um, you know, to kind of alleviate that going forward. The other part, you know, be, I'm not an event planner, um, but I've worked on developments, <laughs> is that the most important thing about controlling costs are sort of knowing what you're going to have to spend ahead of time. And I think that part of to help control those costs is to, and I know you, you know, because you took it over last year, it had, you know, sort of on the run, it was hard to do. This year now you've got a full year under your belt is to really sit down early, and it sounds like you've already done that with the town, to sort of understand and plan for exactly what you're going to need. So now you, you can at least predict your costs. Mm -hmm. Now you can set your fees accordingly so that you can, you know, you have enough revenue to kind of do the, the wonderful things that you want to do so um, in that in that regard Bob I hope we're being helpful I, I think we I mean I'm sure we are right you know um, in, in sort of you know helping plan because I think managing the expenses mm -hmm. is a way to make the Oh, there's no higher. question, so and I completely appreciate that. The issue where we're coming into is the Rotary, actually, to John's point, had another event that probably took a fourth, fourth of the time to coordinate um, that brought in just as many proceeds um, for them. So it's just, it's really, it's, it's, it's a huge undertaking. Well, then yeah. one of the things that we then need to do is to get you more people. Right? I think that's a role that this board can play. I mean, we've done a lot of... Um, a, a lot of work and talking, trying to get people to raise their hands and get on the boards and commissions, and you know, and and whatever bully pulpit. I don't know if anybody listens to us that we have, is to try to drive people toward you as as volunteers. I assume if I wanted to help on the, if I wanted to help on the Fall Street Fair, I don't have to join the Rotary, do I? Or, Absolutely yeah, not. So I mean, no, we that, accept. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I, 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 I put me to work. I, I mean, and I'm using that as an example. I'm sure there are many people. I mean, everybody who lives in town. I'm sure over the last 10 years have gone to at least one Fall Street Fair. Mm -hmm. And there are people who have all that kind of expertise. If we got you 20 more people mm -hmm. for game day, would that help? Absolutely. I mean, I'll I think that's... I'll put them all in sponsorships. And what was that? I'll put them all in sponsorships. There you go. I mean, so I, I think that's a role that we can, that we yeah. can kind of help play as well. Dan? Okay. So I have a comment. John, actually, you made a really interesting observation, which was identifying what the costs of... Um, running the fair is for the town mm -hmm. um, and is there a way to um, determine if the fees we are charging are um, appropriate um, comparing those those hard and soft expenses um, that the town contributes us that the, the town that the um, foster fair is currently paying for um, and seeing if those are appropriate or if they are slightly skewed, in which case we could try and balance them out. Bob, I would sort of defer that to you. Um, but that's John, an interesting yeah. idea that I would support. Yeah, I, I, I Bob, uh, Bob <laughs> you're not sitting in the right place. No, sorry. Um, she's not even looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> she's on HG. Moving on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> Oh no, please more. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the town can best contribute in the way Barry mentioned by helping with people. Um, and another choice is such as tonight a one time expense. Mm -hmm. And the third choice, I think, I don't know what soft costs exactly mean. Um, town meeting doesn't give us permission to just sort of willy nilly spend money. 
But we do have uh, economic development expense money in addition to wage money. You can't have that, but you could have the expense money. Okay. So that's a pocket of money the town meeting has already approved, earmarked for economic development. And I certainly think this event is yeah. you know, economic development oriented. That'd be wonderful. So, when, when I was yes. talking about soft costs, they're directly connected. This is soft costs are like variable costs. Variable costs are things that you want because they are. You know they tend to drive variable revenues and so the idea of economic development funding it, it's a little bit subjective in how you look at it but here's a reality I mean when there's value received from an economic development standpoint and it, you have to work hard to quantify it I'm not sure Bob you know you and I it's yeah. I mean we live in a spreadsheet world where that's a little more difficult but here's a reality and that is that Commerce is enormously affected in a positive way every time that happens. Every time that street fair happens, mm -hmm. commerce is impacted leading up to it, during the time of the event, and following. And what its impact is downstream, somebody discovers ready. You know, so for example, I had occasion recently, and somebody said to me that they were at the Fall Street Fair, went to one of the restaurants, and went, I really like this place. Oh, wow. And now they come back. So these are the kinds of things that economic development money is set aside for. The reality is, I, I think that, I think the hard costs, the pricing of, you know, DPW overtime, you know, mm -hmm. police details, you know, fire. Look, I, I think we price that right, and I think it is what it is. I do think that there's a way to think a little bit outside the box here around the economic development side of this, and we've got some funding. And you know, we're not talking about like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. What we're talking about is, you know, you build up hard costs, you know, of we'll say fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars and then some other, you know, cost flow on top, pretty soon you've got a twenty five thousand dollar bill. And if economic development could help offset, we'll say, thirty percent of that, mm -hmm. um, now suddenly you have a true partnership mm -hmm. um, that creates economic development from economic development funds and it services the entire community in that an organization like Rotary who commits tens of thousands of dollars every year back into all the other organizations. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a value added thing here that is a, I get that it's a little subjective yeah. and it, it's a little hard to wrap your hands exactly around it, but there's something there around economic development and I think that is the place, Bob. I, I, and so you can't just go to town meeting and go, could you give us, you know, twenty thousand dollars worth of police and fire so we could spend it for the road? Sure. It, it, that doesn't make sense. Yep. No, so John, I'm just there. trying to trying to wrap this up. Um, thank thanks, John. Um, do does is the feeling of, of the board we have a hand in the back? Um, yes. Uh, please state your name. Hi. Uh, Social Security Jackson. number. Street. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Sorry, I didn't get your name. Greg. Thank you for this. I don't want to take you out of the job, but I do wonder because you're talking about the Economic Development Committee. Yeah. You sunsetted the Economic Development Committee many years ago now, I think. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's some wisdom going forward, not for this street fair, but going forward to put that committee back together so that it can be a real um, focused effort on economic development for Reading, that it goes beyond sort of the couple of weeks leading up to, couple mm -hmm. of weeks leading after, accidental happenstance. Uh, benefits for the local economy. I think there's no question we could benefit from a, a committee, in my opinion, on that, Demetra. Thank you. Um, the issue at hand, however, Bob's may Bob manages the day-to-day -day business of the town. Um, is the board uh, is it acceptable to the board to allow uh, John to uh, John uh, Bob to to work with the Rotary um, with this, with these expenses in the way that he sees fit? 
I think that's a, 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 a good way to proceed. I, I do have a question though. So um, does that require a town meeting vote to sort of free up those dollars or is that is that kind of Bob in your in your court as sort of uh requires her permission. <laughs> it's in her department, Jean. Oh Jean. <laughs> okay. I thought where's Sharon? Jean Assistant Town Manager, yes, that's my book. So that so essentially <laughs> essentially that that doesn't require, I mean, and no. that doesn't even require us to vote on that. No. It's already been budgeted. So I, I, that would require my signature. <laughs> okay, so why don't we let these guys work it out? Right. And, I, I, and I agree. agree. So you understand board. the feeling of the board without, yeah. I think, I don't think we need to take a vote. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you. For Thank you for your time. You guys are great, and I can't wait. Any, anything special and new this time around that we didn't get Oh, we have a cornhole tournament. A what? Uh, a cornhole okay. tournament. I don't know what that is. But oh, we have a I must be. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, the school committee would like us to volunteer for the dunk tank, <laughs> and I have volunteered, so I challenge all of you to uh, do the same. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think we're slowly Water gaining tank. ground. <laughs> Forty minutes late, um, so uh, we have a presentation. Uh, on the water tank replacements. Do you have the PowerPoint somewhere? Yeah, have the packet. Oh, does um, the board need a break? Five minute break? Like quick five minute break? Be okay? Yeah, we're, uh, we're good for us. No shame. I'm good. Let's, let's roll. Go. All right. Let's go. I'll go quick. Go ahead. Yes, Let Bob. me just start and give you an overview and then uh, let the guy who really knows what he's talking about speak. Alex. Um, <laughs> yes, Alex. Uh, about a year ago, I believe it was a year ago last June, or June, um, Ryan and Matt was standing in for me. I was enjoying uh, a night at the ER in Winchester Hospital. Yes. Um, spoke and t discussed the, uh, the water tile that we need to replace, or paint, mm -hmm. and the idea we would build a cell tower. Yeah. Um, what you're going to see tonight, um, I certainly heard after the meeting that there was uh, two sides of the community on this, one wanting better cell coverage, the other not wanting a tower. So um, staff and I sat down over the next few months and tried to somehow work out on both. Mm -hmm. What you'll see is a presentation where um, I am proposing and, and have decided, uh, unless the board objects, to split those two ideas in half. Um, we will work on the water tower. We have to work on the water um, the water tower. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be in approximately the same footprint and approximately the same size. Yes. Um, we have some slight changes where there can be improvements to the technology and the communication uh, and possibly the addition of another vendor which was sought. If those telecom companies wish to build a cell tower, they do it. They, right. they have to go through the process, ask us, ask the neighbors, so on and so forth. So we are just now proposing to deal with the water tank. Um, what this will not address as well is coverage in the town. Cell coverage in the town will not be as good without a cell tower. We can perhaps make some improvements, especially down around the high school area where we're concerned that cell coverage is not great. Mm -hmm. um, we can do some of that without a cell tower, but there's nothing that's going to provide the same coverage today as a cell tower would. But I don't think it's appropriate at this point for the town to be involved in that decision. Thank you. So, just, let, can, let's just uh, let Ray finish his do his thing. Ryan, uh, Ryan Percival, Ryan. town engineer. Uh, let, let me just take a, I just want to take a couple seconds here and introduce our new senior civil engineer that took us over a year and a half to hire here, uh, Alex Rosicki. Yeah. Um, uh, so he's a welcomed addition to the engineering department, which is a little understaffed, but now we're uh, getting back on the ball. Um, what you have here is it just, I'm going to go through a couple slides that a few of you probably have already seen, but I'll go through really quick. There's just some of the existing Auburn Street tank. The existing Auburn Street tank is in dire need of being replaced. We made the decision um, maybe about a year back to go for a replacement as opposed to painting. It was last painted back in 1996-98 uh, time frame. Night, that's, uh, was constructed in 1953, 750,000 gallons. We're going to try to replace in the same size, if not a larger size, um, about 110 feet tall. And it does have cell carriers on it currently. What you see here is basically the existing tank. You can see um, how we have all the cables, no walkway anymore, some structural deficiencies of all the carriers that are on there. Um, 
same here. You can see all the equipment, no walkway. And just is just another um, example of all the cabling coming down the tank. Can't see any of the deficiency on some of the rusting, but it is there on, on the tank. Um, this is a existing site plan. I don't know if you can see it that well. Um, basically, the larger circle is the, uh, the tank. The smaller circle used to be the smaller old 1800 rocket, if you remember the old uh, cartoon. Um, what we're proposing is to replace in the same exact location as the existing tank um, so we have the least amount of impact to the to neighboring abutters. We're also proposing that we have a separate ring, structural ring, that will hold the carriers to go back on the tank and it will be up to them whether they want to go to a tower or the town wants to decide to go down that road separately. Um, just a brief project update. We've hired Weston Sampson um, to help us with the tank. We hired him way back to help us with the uh, repainting. We've now hired them to help us with the replacement of the tank. Um, we've met with the board twice. This will be the third time. Uh, like I said, and Bob had mentioned, we made the decision a while back to do a replacement versus painting. We did a life cycle cost analysis. You'll see a quick slide. That. Yeah. Um, we're, we're a couple years into that from when we did that, but. Um, like I said, it is compelling. Um, we've already completed a topo survey out there. We've done some soil analysis, some soil borings. Um, we're at the point now where we're just making some final decisions on what we're putting up there, and you'll see uh, really where we're at and what we're thinking about putting up. Um, we may be back in front of the board, depending on the color issue, if you guys mm -hmm. want to change the color, but right now we're mm -hmm. proposing just cobalt blue, um, which is their standard color. And as you'll see, there is some information just on some of the coverage information, just based on the last uh, meeting that we had with the board. Okay. Thanks. As mentioned, here's the life cycle cost slide. I think that was a lot better to show than some of the spreadsheets. Which mm -hmm. You can see our break-even point was in around somewhere between year 12 and year 15. And then there's a, a big difference. Yes, you, you can you can see. The blue line would be continually having to repaint right. on an old tank that's just going to deteriorate and get worse. When was the last time we painted? Back in 96 and 98. So in interior like 96. Yeah, and usually you want to be a lot less than that. And we did start this conversation before that, but we had the carriers to discuss too. Okay. Um, this is a coverage map during our last meeting. Um, the the board wanted to uh, request information from the carriers as far as coverage on the tower. This is just a follow up on that action item. What you'll see here in green is what they're on now, the tank. The additional color, which is sort of very difficult to see on this, is that tanner color just above on the northern part of the town. That's what it extends to when it goes to 165 feet, so not much. Um, this is coverage, but uh, at what level is this uh, 4G coverage? That would have been, we would have picked the mid uh, level because they could have been anywhere in between 110 and 165. So that's where they would have been at 135. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't change much, even at the 165 level, which you'll see on this next slide, this one was done at that. Right. If I could just ask you to clarify, uh, what represents the old in that picture is the, the green, green, right? The green. And the new is the, the new, white you can edition. barely see it. I'll point to it. Cool. It's in this area up in here, that darker tan. You can see it a lot better on the screen, but uh -huh. that is the additional coverage that would have been if you if they go if they wanted to pursue a tower it's not okay. extensive by any means it's not a wow so it's not a real improvement <laughs> of an already weak system no and and yeah. again they they base their whole entire network on macro sites which are towers and and some small cell sites but they need both to yeah. work they don't just need one because the coverage is yeah. almost That's decreasing uh, there isn't, there isn't, we all know where the area is in town. Practical standpoint. <laughs> right, you know, right. Uh, it, being somebody that's driving around this yeah. town a lot. Yeah, if you particularly drive in the northern part of town, yes. yeah. um, that's where it is. Yeah, it's not important unless you live in that part of town. So this is, 
Again, the, I'm just following up on some of the information that the board had wanted from since the last meeting. This is existing coverage. Mm -hmm. This one might be a little easier to see. I would pay attention to the green, both dark and light. And I can go back and forth so you can see the difference. That's the increase. And there's some streets on there if you can make them out. But you can see it doesn't increase much in that in-house coverage. That's with the tower option? That's at the highest. The highest. Right. Um, that's at that 110? That's at the 165. That, that's if you put up that 140, 40 foot tower. Correct. So, am I right, Ryan? You're trying to set. I just want to be sure. I know we're walking through this right now as far as what the cell coverage is, but I think I understood you to say that you're trying to separate the two problems. I mean, we got Correct. a water tank. Correct. Problem. We got to fix the yeah. water. Like Bob sure. had mentioned, we've we've made the decision to replace the tank, yeah. and we're going to put the carriers back on the tank. Separate the two. Put in a safer manner than it's on. Correct. In a safer, more appropriate manner, and in a structural manner so, that can be supported. So essentially, so they're standalone know. off the yeah. tank, but they're still part of the tank. So it's essentially what we have now, but just better for the workers, better for the carriers to get on there. One hundred percent. Absolutely. And it's not any bigger than what it's there now. Uh, or maybe a little bit. It's going to. It's going to just change in shape. Uh, the size of the tank is going to still. But most importantly, we we solve our water tank problem. Right. Correct. Because this is and we start. This we was, solve was it never built as a cell tower. This was built as a water right. tank. Right. Right. You know, we need to. Preserve they will go back on the tank, but they will go back in an appropriate right. way. Right. As opposed to when this tank was constructed, it wasn't constructed to support those. Yeah, you have some good pictures, I think, of what the new tank may look like. I have some representations of some tanks that are yeah. that you know it may look like. Great. One, one more yep. question. So the coverage thing's kind of kicked down the road for another day for another Yeah, I, I provided this to the board because the last yeah. time we had met, right. we had a couple action items that were out yep. there, and I did send out an RFP. So this was just following up on right. that coverage. Just are are there any plans on the table to address this? If we're not going to put a tower up, are there? I think Bob had mentioned um, we do have to have conversations with the carriers as far as going back on and how they, get, how they uh, right. come off the tank in a temporary manner. I believe at that time we'll make the suggestion if if they want to go down that road that by all means they're welcome to go down that road on their own well, or uh, well, maybe address the. Is there a plan to stage the tower, the broadcaster somewhere else? Um, they have so to be they, working they, while you're. Building they will. The tower. It, yeah. They will have to do that. And uh, my understanding is sometimes they'll bring in a large crane and just oh, hang everything from a large yeah. crane because it is a temporary. Yeah. Is it four to six months usually? usually About four to six months oh, for, for the tape fast. replacement. And we're able to do this and replace it in the same location because we right. do currently have two tanks. Um, and we're able to take one offline. So we, okay. and we, are, we are connected to a redundant um, MWA loop now. Mm -hmm. uh, the proposed tank, again, I think we're leaning more towards the 750,000 gallon because we have redundancy with the MWA now, but we are going through that process of checking that hydraulic model again. Um, it will be a composite elevated tank, meaning it will be a glass fused to steel bowl on the top on top of a concrete um, column which is a little different than what we have now is open air truss on the bottom yeah this is more of a pedestal yep. but it's it's going to be a lot more efficient we'll actually have storage space inside and you'll see some pictures right. um, again just to reiterate it's back in the same location same footprint when you say low maintenance you never have to paint it or do you um, so I just want to correct you, it's not painted, it's glass fused, yeah. so we will never paint it. It'll just be, if we get to the point where we have to fix it, it will be a replacement of just that bowl on the top. Uh, okay. And it comes in various fabricated sections that get bolted back up. Okay. But I don't You're not saying there's the zero long, it's, cost. it's 30 plus years before we even... Yeah. Even maybe even more, longer than that. Yeah. But, but there is some, obviously, maintenance cost. There's always going to be maintenance, yes but not to the manner of what we have now. Yeah. Um, again, there's gonna be standalone bracketing for, for the carriers to come on. I mean, we will address that in the new RFP when we so go we'll on. So we'll solve our OSHA problems up there? 100%, safety. correct. Good. Yep. Um, again, just to reiterate, there's additional storage space, which I'll, I'll show you in some of these slides, and very low maintenance. Uh, I had the, uh, um, the benefit of actually going to see this in person. It's got a beautiful view of the skyline. Just if you ever want to go up there, it's bigger than 110 feet. Though. Um, I do. What's the height? Do you know what the height is? Down there? 135. Uh, 135. So we're going to be a little shorter than that, um, but this is actually smaller in volume. So you'll probably see a a, a taller 
tank on the top or maybe even a little wider tank. Um, but this is exactly the style that we're looking for, that solid column down at the bottom of concrete that does not have to be maintained and on top is that glass fused to steel structure. And everything is in, enclosed inside that, so if you wanted to climb up, you'd have to actually go into the garage door. That's a garage door down at the bottom. And you can come out the top. So this is in Peabody. This is the same tank. And they chose to go with banding, but that blue color, that cobalt blue, is the standard color. Anything else would be extensive amount of exchange. And you can see how they just blend in. They're on a separate ring. This is West Salem, but not in our state. Um, that's probably closer to what we're looking at. And that was, that was the last picture we had. Um, but I did want to go back to this and just point out that garage door. It's a, that's a full bay garage door that can fit our vehicle. Mm. So we'll be able to store some equipment inside. Great. We'll have a sampling site inside to help us sample uh, from the tank out of the elements. And a portion of the the tower of the rise part can be used for water storage? Uh, just the portion that's cut that white and blue striped tank. Oh, I thought that, everything was, below. Yeah. So uh, an elevated tank, you're only, you're looking at a small volume, but you're, you want to get the pressure, so that's why you're elevated. Yeah. Um, as opposed to um, a full standpipe where you're looking for full volume yeah. and also pressure. So, uh, Ryan, a question about the building of the new tower and the cell service. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure there's a number of, in our packet there were a number of uh, letters from uh, the police organization, Correct. I believe, the fire department as well, that um, better, slightly improved coverage will help uh, their job. Right. The, the letters that you received were from public safety in support of a, a cell tower, which um, is obvious that they're looking for better coverage. So I guess my question is that um, can we coordinate the building of the cell tower commercially with the, the reconstruction of the um, water tower so that we don't have a crane up there for much longer than necessary. In reality, I think that that seems to be a, a, a good idea. However, um, I think when you're, when you're going through the construction se sequencing, that, that that's not going to be possible to do that. Um, we're really looking to do this water tank, and we yeah. have to do this water tank as yeah. soon as possible. I, I didn't. I didn't mean rush the. No, no, I, no, the no, I understand. Water tank, but maybe time the the ending up when the water tank is complete to have the cell carriers uh, build their component. Well, we'll certainly when we have that meeting with the, with the carriers to talk about temporary structures. I'm, I'm sure we're going to be talking about whether or not they want to go to a permanent structure. Um, and again, I think the, the logistics of, of trying to do all that in one, this is why we're at the point where we need to, to replace yeah. the tank because we've been down this road for right. quite some time. Now, we actually, the project started out, I want to say, back in 2012 as a painting project, yeah. and here we are in 2018 as a replacement because we've been so long. Right. Um, we have had, we, we are subject to sanitary surveys on, yeah. on our system. We have had one. Um, we are looking to at least have something in the mix so we have this construction sequence or, or schedule um, to report back. Yeah. Um, so that's where we stand with the tank and that's why we made the decision that we had to replace. We will definitely follow up and have that discussion with the carriers because we have to. We have to find out. What, what if they say no? I, I, that's their prerogative to, to say no and not want to put the tower up. Um, and then when it's no do? surprise that when we sent the RFPs out for the tower yeah. on our dime, yeah. that they wanted to go on a tower. Right. Okay. Um, I was not surprised. Yet. I was not surprised at the response. They have no interest about our ability to provide fresh water though to the town. They just wanted to know that you could make a phone call. Right. We all have agendas, right. so okay. um, ours are to the citizens and to public health. So they don't wish us ill either. But. <laughs> 
Thank you for the update. Um, is this the only style of tank that's being considered? And uh, at what point will the residents who live in that area be informed? I mean, they know that this is an ongoing conversation, but this is a drastically different aesthetic than the version we have now. And I think I, I want to make sure that they're uh, included in the discussion. They're here. So I would say, of, here. I would say as far as the um, type of tank, the, the, this, the composite elevated tank, yes, we've settled on this as, as the tank being that this is the best that you can put up. Um, as far as if you want to go down the road of aesthetics, um, I'm sure at some point we can get to the discussion of coloring. However, I just want to point out that cobalt blue is their manufacturer's color, so there's no cost associated with that color. When you yeah. do go up, it goes up, at, you know, it will cost fifty to $100,000 just to change color, and that's a solid color. If you want to go to striping, you want to add a decal, there's always this cost associated with that as well, <coughs> depending on the, the same with both carriers or um, not carriers, but both companies that provide tanks. And the height of this, the new one, and the old one will essentially be will be the same. Right. We we don't need to go any higher. We we're right at our pressure elevation that we need to be at. So 110 is where we'll be around. Uh, it'll just it may change in shape, um, but we we're not anticipating being any wider than 70 uh, 70 feet in diameter, which is that's what's out there now. Right. To Although it's, um, it's 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 narrower on the bottom. It's possible we that we can. Actually, it's yeah. possible we can get narrower. We can get taller right. in, in the volume. Um, we have to be at that height of 110. It's important that we have our elevation yeah, set to that appropriate height, or else everyone will have a very uh, low pressure shower. <laughs> um, so that's an important. That's that's where we need to be. But we can play with the di di diameter and the height of that steel tank right. for, yeah. to provide our volume. So um, I noticed as I went through the presentation, there's one point where there's, um, there's currently three carriers on the existing tower, um, but there's capacity on this new version for more. Um, Did I understand that correctly? Based on one of the styles of the tank, there is, if we go to 46 foot in diameter, 56 foot in diameter, we can do a 42 foot wide uh, tall tank, which would provide us several bandings of 10 feet but uh, 10 to 16 10 by 16 is usually the sector of what a carrier is in so if we can do two carriers on top at three different sectors which is where they want to be and then you can do two right on the bottom of that um, and they can bid on that accordingly under the under a new RFP when we so put is that, that four or that's six? four we can add four um, so four in addition three. to the three or four total Nope, so there's three total that are on there now. Uh -huh. We may be, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to get a fourth. So okay. we'll go to four. Okay. Because I know that at the previous meeting some months ago, there was resident concern regarding the cell tower, which now sounds like it's a different conversation, which may or may not happen. But if this has the capacity for a fourth um, carrier, then I think that needs to be discussed as well, especially involving the residents more. Um, I think that that discussion certainly happened um, at a later date, I mean, we're, we're gonna we're gonna still go forward as far as the, the tank is concerned, and then when we get to the RFP process, and you know, if we want to add a fourth or stay with three, um, we can certainly address that at that point. So, um, in the interest of of time, um, we, it sounds like we need a water tower, um, right? Uh, and and. Is is the is the board agree with the plan for the water tower? Was there an ask here? Yeah, I mean, or is it is it just an or up, this is just being both done? Both is great, but oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, you asked for a presentation a year ago, so here's the update. Yeah. The difference being, the ask no longer includes a cell tower. Right. This has to be done. Or will be done. Um, the other question was really, I think, the source of controversy. Right. And, was and the equipment on the tower or a... Right. Yeah. So, I, I, so I'd like to just, um, if we could nail down the, the water tower part and then have a brief discussion on the cell 
Well, well the, yeah, the, 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 cell, the cell stuff is going to go back on the water tap. I mean, yeah. everything status quo. Yeah. Well. Yes. And right. you're replacing a much needed replacement. Put it in a safer location. I don't right. think you're asking us, Ryan. You're telling us. Yeah. Right? Yes. Good. <laughs> but, but that's what I politely. Politely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. last year. Looks like a good idea to me. Thanks last for telling year when folks came. But there is a, right. Nobody was arguing against the fact that we need to replace the water tower. It was the 165 feet coverage. Correct. rocket that was going to go up in the air right. that was, right. Uh, right. in addition to that, that was kind Correct. of getting oh. under but, people's right. hands. You mentioned that. That is the problem. You mentioned that the cell service providers will pay for uh, manufacturing their towers. Uh, Maybe I'm misunderstanding. No, I never. No, we've never had that discussion with the, with the carriers. Okay. Um, so what part the carriers would be? I'm sure very happy if we paid for a tower, but um, the discussion we're going to have with the carriers after we leave this meeting is going to be how are you going to move your equipment off temporarily yep. mm -hmm. while we build this tank Yes. and we you go back on the tank. Um, That's it. We can also yeah. open up at the same point at the same time that the discussion that we had here but that... They, 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 own, they own their equipment. Correct. Right? So it's not like we're going to replace no. what we're paying no, for no, their no, equipment. No. Right. no. It's the same deal that we had. No, the only discussion we had had a year ago was whether or not the town wanted to get in the business of building a cell tower. Ah, okay. And that's the discussion that we had had. And we continue to have a revenue stream from the rent. Right. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I mean, so, you know, Correct. everything's the same. With the ability to Except actually to get 33% more revenue yep. if another one goes Correct. on there. Correct. And, and, and that would be a broader conversation with the community. Right. That's well, another band of place. power. You know. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. So as long as we can ensure that the com the community and the neighbors are engaged in the process of yes. the, of the cell, yeah. I I'm I'm fine with that. Um, Bob, do you need a, a vote? No. Okay. Actually, there are folks there are folks here from the neighborhood who want to take some public comment. <laughs> Yes. Um, would anyone like to make public comment if you're if you live in that neighborhood? Yes. Uh, it's Robert Connor on Beacon Street. Yep. Uh, you said you had a, a, a question a year ago about uh, possibility of a tower. Were the residents informed about that? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, Several of them were here. <laughs> yeah, we had a, a yeah, meeting about were. it. Surprised not to see you. <laughs> yeah, there was actually quite a number of them yeah. Yeah. that came. Uh, it and then it was a public presentation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and they had they had some legitimate concerns. Okay. Uh, and uh, I was talking to Mike that you got forgive me, Mike, for putting the name up. But, uh, <laughs> he said that when these first went in, uh, there was a, a statement that as part of the contract that the radiation would be uh, measured. Mm -hmm. towers uh, and I went down to the engineers and health department and there was no record of that. Does anybody know of a record of the testing for radiation? There is quite a bit of information in the packet that I think Ryan put together one on. Of, one of the other concerns from that meeting about a year ago was um, some health exposure. Right. Um, and they, they provided information as far as the, the exposure, um, which is in the packets. Right, which is from federal uh, yeah, correct. authorities. Right. Correct. Um, and they explained the radiation and, and the essentially th that um, they do not have any health concerns about radiation up that high. Uh, and somebody pointed out that the feds can get it wrong sometimes, and they raise the example of asbestos, but um, I think Ray, uh, Ray, I've been talking to Ray too much on the, uh, Ryan um, did a good job of putting together some, some good information that hopefully will alleviate some fears in that department. Well, I'll give an article from the Wall Street Journal. 30,000 towers uh, exceed the radiation limits. And I'll give you a copy. And okay. And I'm going to test those. Well. It's in the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. So so thank you for that. And, and I hope that 
when we s start the cell tower discussion with the cell tower companies, um, that the, res the residents will be informed and involved. Any other comments? Yes. Carolyn White, 17, Justin Brewer, and I share Bob's concerns about the information. I don't remember this one. Yeah. So I don't know how I can tell if I think I'm like two hours away. Right. So, so for the cell tower discussions, uh, we can make some effort to reach out to, to the, the neighbors, I think, um, to make sure they're informed. Um, and we'll, you know, yeah. I just have one more comment. Yeah. The FCC limits are uh, anywhere, some countries are literally one and two percent of the limits we have. Yeah. So, you keep saying FCC, but why were they exposing us 50 times higher? Then, then what other countries? Hello. Uh, Sweden's one, China. Yeah. Studies uh, in England about the children with leukemia and high recovery with the social exposure to these uh, cameras. Yes. Um, What's the board's unanswerable question? Yeah, <laughs> difficult right, but, but questions to answer. No, that's not true. Ryan did provide some some health information on that, and I read it. Um, and but during the discussions, we can we can, can consider that some more. The the board of health, our board of health, can we could ask them to look into it. Um, uh, or, you know, we'll do our best to accommodate, I think. Well, James, you already looked into the last time. I think I knew a heck of a lot more than she did. I mean, it's been hours in the library. Yeah. No one on the town side is, is worried about this. Yeah. Are they going to get this? How much did you get a month on these things? 500? This quick area? I don't look as I, I just want to make it make it clear that I don't look at this as a revenue stream. I look at this as a, as, as something that the town needs, but also needs to take the residents' concerns into account, with the knowledge that it's impossible to please everyone. So, go ahead, Bob. Uh, no, I, I'm not allowed to say because we're actually in negotiations. But I will say that the town has no choice but to accept. The that is federal law. How much we get or don't get from them is our choice. How much did we get last year? Well, but the point is we can't say no to these vendors. So we're not going to tell them. No, because we're in negotiations with the vendors. Well, this is like two years ago when they missed. We can look at it. What does it matter? Two years ago. But the point is whatever money we do or don't get has nothing to do with any of this decision. That's the second step. We have no choice but to, under federal law, we have no choice no, but to accept the vendors. I know that. So whatever revenue we do or don't get from them is in our decision. Well, I mean, there's we're going from three to four. I just did the, the yeah. leap. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move this discussion forward. Um, I just have one question. Yes. Um, so, um, this is Ryan, great presentation. I, um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, Bob, I, I'm assuming this is in the capital. I mean, how yeah. how much, and is this in the capital plan? Is this a debt exclusion? Is this no. Um, we're just going to do it in the levy and a couple of years ago. All right, so the water budget. Did Tom uh, Tom appropriate something for the structure up there? They have appropriated money for the cell tower that yeah. we canceled. So oh, obviously we've never spent it. That's been rescinded. Okay. So that was debt authorization or, uh, or uh, capital? Yeah. Okay. Capital. So that can get moved to something else. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Right, okay, the board okay moving on? Yes, we are. Thank um, you. Before we start the discussion that was, we're getting good, better, um, 12 minutes late. Um, some people walked into the room who sent uh, communications to the board. Um, I meant to highlight some of those, the resident communications to the board, so it, it, we, we acknowledge them, but uh, there just wasn't time tonight. But please look in the packet. There are several communications from residents that um, I encourage you to take a look at. And, and thank you for the communication. Okay, so um, 
the discussion of the recreation liaison assignment, um, I, 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 this was a, a last minute ad um, when the draft meeting minutes came out for the recreation committee. I, um, John, at the beginning of the meeting, agreed to um, step down and allow uh, another member uh, to take over as as liaison. Um, I think for this part of the discussion, I just like to limit it to um, the board's thoughts on on those meeting minutes and. Um, and, and, and again, we, we need, I'd like to be respectful of, of uh, personalities and um, as much as we can. Um, Could I clarify why you're doing this? The matter's been resolved. It has been. It has been. Um, Actually, we should probably move to move picking more to talk about right nominate a yeah. picture yeah. right here now. Yeah. Nominate right. Nominate someone else. Um, I, I'll be happy to stay on as the other way. So. Thank you. Now there is an issue, and we have some recommending members here. Uh, they tend to meet Tuesday evenings, and tonight they were smacked up opposite our meeting. Yeah. I don't know if this happens all the time or if it happens on a rotational basis, but that's going to have to get solved. I think if we're going to have an effective liaison. Yes. If not, we'll, we may not have a liaison. Yeah. No, I well, think it's, it's, it's important, important to, to, okay. to do it um, so we can work that out. My point, I just wanted to explain why this was a last minute addition to the agenda. So with that, um, I, I actually, it's, you, you, it's your, Mr. Chair, it's actually yes, your I make a recommendation. Uh, uh, right. responsibility yeah. to make so, a recommendation that um, the board would approve it. Right. And then, yeah, so so the way thing, these things work is the, the chair makes a recommendation and the board votes on it. And, and I, I think um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of history to this. Um, I've been following it since um, I, I learned of it through Barry when we met for coffee. Um, Dan's obviously involved. So, so I'd like to nominate uh, Vanessa be strictly, well, primarily because um, she comes in with uh, a, f a fresh perspective. Is this the second person? Okay. This would be the second. So Dan is, is, is still appointed. Um, and uh, <clears throat> does the board accept John's resignation first of all? I think we, do we, have we just to? need to, uh, don't have to. We don't have to? Okay. Um, so thank you, John. Thank you. Um, and thank you for your 35 years of service. It's going to continue. To kids. <laughs> to That's not going to change. I know. Yeah. But and, you know, I'm that. certainly not going to stop going to recreation committee meetings. Right. I mean, you know, I've been involved in recreation yeah. the entire time that I've lived in this right. town and yeah. will continue to do so yeah. long after I'm not a select. So nothing's changing there. And nothing's changing about the extensive involvement that I have in many youth serving organizational nonprofits in this town. That is not going away. Yeah. Um, if it does anything as I my time frees up, mm -hmm. um, there'll be more of that. But also to, it's also a good opportunity for the recreation committee and the select board to think about ways to work together, you know, in ways that maybe we haven't thought of before. Having the second liaison I think helps that. So um, I second Vanessa's nomination. Thank you. Do I have? I mean, do yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I'm gonna. I should have probably done this first, but I would like to give the recreation committee, if there are members here, an opportunity to speak before we discuss, so we can consider your thoughts. Can I ask a question, Andy? Yes. Um, is the recreation committee here in session? Your okay. form. Not in session. Okay. Do you, do, you do, not have, do you have a quorum? Yeah, we do not have a quorum. Okay. okay. So they can speak individually. Speak. Right. So, so you can yeah, speak. Right. You'll speak individually. Yeah. And actually, are there associate members here that become. Well, if they have an elevator. Uh, they have an elevator. Okay. <laughs> just want to. You're going ask all these questions. Okay. Uh, you sent somebody home? Is that what happened? <laughs> 
so I invite invite you to comment before we start our discussion. Um, sure, I, I can comment. Um, I'm Dan Foley. Um, I'm a member of the Recreation Committee, no longer the chair. Um, I was the chair. Um, I missed the beginning of, I guess, the, the topic here. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I can just generally comment. Um, you know, there's it, been a lot of just unfortunate um, interactions, events last year while I was chairman. Um, I take fault in a lot of it. Um, you know, there's maybe I could have done things better. Uh, I think there's a lot of fault to go around. Uh, it's disappointing that there's uh, interactions like we've had in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's it's recreation, and it's it's unfortunate where we are. And I think um, I don't know who just said it, whether it was Andy or Barry. Just um, you know, here's an opportunity for us to to look at this and move forward and do things differently. You know, and other ideas. Um, you know, and just from where I sit, it's yeah, um, let's let's look beyond where we are and, mm -hmm. and, and, and get past things. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Um, so Emily Sisson, 92 John Street, and I just promoted as the chair of her community. Congratulations. Uh, Our condolences, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I think Dan just commented that, you know, our meetings are in direct conflict and that's been a problem for the liaison in the past. And at our last meeting, we had discussed the possibility of moving it and for the next meeting, we plan to um, or see what's going to work best for everyone and hopefully move it away from the course lesson so that the communication can be better. And, and I agree with Dan's points. I think that there was just a lack of communication and I, things got escalated and heated and it, you know, it was not the court's intent to, to you know, hurt people's feelings and, and make things seem a little bit more But I think that, you know, having two days on will help and I appreciate the court's consideration in increasing that and I'm hoping that that's a great full time for someone to move to work together and move forward and definitely appreciate um, Thank you. Yes. Um, Mary Ellen Killian, 33 Lewis Street. I've been a member of the Recreation Board for about 18 years. And um, just to um, support what um, Dan and Emily said, um, we, the Recreation Committee, you know, just really helps to, along with our intent, is just to evaluate programs that are in town, mm -hmm. and evaluate, um, uh, you know, the development of programs as well as the scheduling of town parks and um, recreation facilities. So we just are tasked with that and we try to do the best job that we can each time. Yeah. And um, we just need to make sure that we can all work together with the Board of Selectmen, the liaison, the school committee liaison, and ourselves. Um, and again, we're just because of the way the recreation committee is, most of our clients are youth-based. Yeah. We just really need to make sure we watch out for um, uh, adults who help take care of youth-based programs and make sure that uh, everyone's behaving properly yeah. and uh, doing the right thing by the kids. Thank you. Yes. Um, so one of the things that we do um, is that we try to, at least on a yearly basis, is to bring in different boards and committees to sort of sit down with us and discuss issues. I, I don't, rem I mean, someone else can maybe remember, no, well. when was the last time we actually just had an agenda item with just, you know, the Recreation Committee and the board just, here's what we're doing, here's what we are thinking about, here's how you can help us to have one of those kind of meetings. I think it would might be maybe sometime in the fall, Mr. Chair, if you want to think about this, is to, is to get that on the agenda and we can really start with this. I mean, I, I've been on the board now for 
four years, and maybe we did. I don't remember. I don't. It's been remember. about eighteen months. It's been about okay. eighteen so, months. So ago, we did we it. We had a visit, um, really focused on Birch Meadow. Yeah. Also okay, that focused was a, yeah. on um, so the was. pricing structure. They did a lot of work right. on refabricating the pricing structure, and so that that, that was presented that. That to was, us, was as well as you know some discussions about around the Birch Meadow, the progress of the Birch Meadow subcommittee up to that point. Um, was also a discussion that was brought by the Recreation Committee. Um, also a discussion about the lighting of Birch Meadow, which was kind of a front and center. So it was, I would say, about 18 months since there's been an, an official visit with a presentation. As we understand it, I think our, our, our uh, administrators asked to come here and give a presentation, and we usually come in uh, support of that right. administration. Yeah. I think we should get sure that. Lot yeah. Yeah. yeah, I so think that there's been will, some, John, you know, the transition, no, excuse me, I, so I just, just want to, to answer that, Okay. if you'd like me to. There was clearly a transition between administrators, and that, you know, I mean, people need to get acclimated into their new job, and, you know, new people and new jobs, and I think that probably is the reason that there's right. been a little bit of a delay while that's been getting settled, and I think that that's quite settled, frankly, at this point. And it would be great to have you guys come in and talk about, you know, where you see yourselves. I know that there's things going on with rules and a lot of other things that you're working on. So. I, I, per, per, go ahead. Uh, so the Birch Meadow Master Plan Subcommittee, do we have a separate liaison for that, or is that by default the Rec Committee? One of us should probably handle it. Liaison? Okay. I don't think you need a separate liaison. Yeah. we got two. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I, I do I did looking back you know I found out about um, much of this uh, through Barry when when I, we transitioned um, and then I looked into previous meeting minutes and uh, a letter that was sent to town hall and uh, I, I think the tensions got built up uh, too high for this situation so I would uh, we will have a discussion uh, a brief discussion not a witch hunt but um, a brief discussion as where we maybe took a, a wrong turn and we can learn from that and not do it uh, in, you know in the in the future um, so that that will happen and, and I um, and then including in that I think we want to discuss the, you know the role of liaisons and and um, and what our policy says about the role of liaisons and have a discussion about that so that will be forthcoming when will that happen oh, uh, <laughs> I, I'd like it to happen soon but um, we have a lot on the docket for the next couple of months. Mr. Chair, so, you mean role liaison? I'd like to do reflect just vis-a-vis -vis the rec committee, or just in general about how we work with different. Yeah, I, boards I think the committees. rec committee is a good example. Um, there was some feedback that that I, I read from them um, that we should discuss and and learn 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 from. Okay. Well, maybe in that in the meeting that when we. Just making a suggestion yeah. that when when we do invite the rec committee to come, that could be one of the agenda items. Well, to talk I about. think let's not tiptoe around this. If there's some concerns about how I've conducted myself in my job as liaison, then yeah. let's get it on the table and talk about it. Yeah, it's not for tonight, John, but but I think we well, will I get mean, it the on the table. The innuendo that about. comes out of the way that you're couching this yeah. is highly offensive to me. Uh, I'm sorry, John, but I read some of the draft meeting minutes and and. And I, and I think we have to have a, a you know, we have to discuss them. Well, great, but you know, you, you leave in a public setting on television mm -hmm. with a room full of people, yeah. the innuendo that I have somehow misbehaved in my role as liaison, and I find that offensive and I find it incorrect. I, I'm not, I want to have a discussion about how things developed how things played out on the 12th, the meeting of the 12th. Um, so June that- 10th. June 10th, sorry. Yes. Um, it was June 10th. 
I thought it was the 12th for some reason. I In any event. Like what? We'll um, but well, yes, Vanessa. I mean, I I would like I found out about this all very recently, um, and it has a much longer backstory. So I would very much like to have a debrief session about how we got to here, uh, because I think it's important in how the board comports itself, the expectations um, that the residents should have about how decisions get made, um, and why we are in a situation where we need to change a liaison position when we just dealt with this. Um, less than two months ago. So, and I think it's important to have that openly. Yeah, I mean, it's more of a, 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 a let's, let's assess the process and, and see if we can improve, but sort of do a post-mortem. And it's not, to, John, it is not to impugn your character, but... Well, in your, with your reference to the minutes, mm. which is the yeah. reason that yeah. there was a visitation, I mean, there was I questions of integrity, there was questions of right. malfeasance, there was questions of improper influencing, none of which are accurate. And, you know, if we're going to leave that hanging in the air, yeah. I'm not happy with that. And then we will discuss on the 31st. Good. I'm glad we'll discuss it. And I think we need to discuss it in the context of the minutes that were actually written, mm -hmm. also in the context of the process that was used that got us to this place, yes. not just here, yes. but from another committee. Yeah. And so there is a, you know, this is an extensive conversation. Another committee. That needs to, it, it, this perk right out of the Recreation Committee. Oh, oh, Their yes. process on yes. April 17th is what yeah, well, I think brought can, this to a head. Yeah, can well, we table I wanna, this? I, think we just, I wanna stop yeah. this. Yeah. John, I, I will, you, we will um, have you speak and address your concerns. We'll have the rec committee address their concerns. But really, the point is, is that so? Are, are we, are are we, we inviting the rec committee? I, I don't. Not understand. now. I, I just want. To, we just need to get a new liaison on, and then on the thirty-first. Can I, can I yes. be clear on why we're doing this? At yes. the outset of this meeting, Mr. Yeah. Halsey, I think, uh, being a real gentleman, yes. Yes. And acknowledging certain things. Yeah. Resigned voluntarily from this. Yes, we've heard the chair, the ch former chair, say yes. He regrets things he's done. Why are we going to beat this horse to death? Let's make a new because beginning. Because the public is still not aware of what happened and why we are here. I'm barely aware of that because residents informed me of what was happening. I didn't hear it from this board, and that's a problem. So uh, we and need what, to and have. Why do, you, why do you want to air it out? If it, I, I think it's important it's, to air it's it out. It's relevant to how this so, board functions. That. And Let's and table this until the 31st. Oh, yes. And we can, we can go on at this. You start pointing fingers, fingers will be pointed back. Yeah, I, I, I'd committee. rather it's, not it's be a, a finger pointing. I don't point. know why you're doing it. Did, it's did not a matter of pointing fingers. Okay, yeah. so, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. so let's... Um, no, we did. Did we vote yeah. that? Yeah. Well, so so we have a few seconds. All in favor of Vanessa being assigned to the Recreation Committee. In addition to Dan. In addition, yeah, Dan's yeah, already there. Yeah. I mean, that's just my, my thought. Yeah. I, I hear you, Dan, and I'm, I, my goal is to try to, you know, uh, see where things sort of went off the rails and then um, put them put them back, knowing that none of us are. I certainly am not perfect, and I don't plan on pointing fingers. Um, all right, moving on to Bob. And, and and I will take a, a five minutes break. Yeah, okay. Okay.
Uh, in your packet's a four-page summary of um, the town's response to your town manager goals from last year, ending June. Um, I'm not sure what level of detail you want me to do because it was all in there, so I'll go at a speed. You tell me if you want to go faster Hold on, or slower. let me just get it up. I had it set. Okay. Uh, it's also behind me. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, you give us a certain amount of goals, I guess, offhand. As a rule of thumb, I try to say 90% is pretty good. Yeah. Just because the goals you give at one point in time change over the next 12 months, and you got to leave a little flexibility, and we well exceeded the 90%. Um, I'll just jump right down to the uh, topics. I think by far the most important topic that you know doesn't compare to anything else is the financial ones. The four goals related to the override. Mm -hmm. um, we, we staff and you and other elected boards and appointed boards and volunteers in the community did, did a great job. Um, you know, I, I will say senior tax relief was a big plus. Um, this town is very progressive in the senior tax area. Um, we are now the acknowledged leader. Uh, when Victor goes to conferences, he's uh, forced to speak. He's forced to make speeches. He's going to think of charging. Um, but Reading is absolutely leading the pack now in senior Should tax I, relief. Uh, at a social occasion, met uh, Linfield selectmen, and they're working on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As is Wakefield. Yeah. Uh, Wakefield's got a home rule petition ready. Um, the only difference that Wakefield is going to do, as, as last I heard it, was not give the selectmen any flexibility in terms of the 0.5 to 2.0. Oh. They're just going to say 1.0. Huh. Simplify. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'd like to point out that for the override, re remember all those meetings in December where, where Bob presented uh, and, and the department heads presented information that really allowed, I think, the board to move right. forward. And, and I, I mean, that, would, yeah, that, that was a budget, budget process. process. Yeah, it, was, it was a budget process, but, yeah, but hyped up and moved forward. Well, so. and more importantly, uh, letting the department heads speak freely was, was a risk for you, I think. Police and fire yeah. are the only difference. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Even Sharon came out and raised her hand for yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad you did. I don't tell her what to do. Um, you know, so, the risk was public safety, a big part of it is confidence, consumer confidence, if right. you will. Right. That was the risk. You almost don't want to admit the problem. Right. But well, you, you want to be admit. careful. So I thought he did a good job. I think uh, the department has did a great job on this one. Um, we are prepared, and it's in your draft agenda uh, or schedule, to do it again in December because the board seemed to think that really worked okay. well. And I agree, staff also agreed. I don't think we may need quite as much of an effort and as long a discussion with each department, but although time we seem although to. Although last, last year it was kind of, okay, here's, here's what our budget looks like. And then we had the discussion of what we wanted to add back, we have an override. So that, right. that added a layer of complexity, yeah. which we don't have to do anymore. Right. Um, but it does, it does give time to uncover other kinds of items and yep. issues. I, I have a sort of a newbie kind of a question here. So select board members are assigned to these things, mm -hmm. um, and and I, full disclosure, I was never involved in the ones that because uh, yeah, these got set before you came on. Well, well, okay. some of them no, he was no. here for some. Of them. Yeah, I was here for some of them. Was, you, you, some of them have what separate are, what's meetings. What's the expectation of uh, the select board? So, sometimes the very fact that you were in a meeting where it was discussed and gave input, yeah. the Suckman meeting. Counts. Right. Counts. Absolutely. And yeah. sometimes there are freestanding meetings with staff, but not always. Because at that, yeah. but also too, I think at the time, and maybe this was also before you came on. Yeah. We had um, sort of we yeah. had we had sort of staff select board yeah. yes. working groups. Yeah. And so yeah, we did. We right. still do. And and maybe that. Need, and you can see behind me, there's a staff lead for each goal, right. and then right. there's select board members, if you will. And so that's to be discussed in the future as yeah, to whether okay. you want to continue that or not, and whether there's one or two of you. Because some of it overlaps, and some yeah. of it, yeah. So. And honestly, every goal is very different from each one as to what the select board's involvement might be or might not be. Okay. All right. Um, well, we next, can discuss that on an issue by issue basis. Next set of four is uh, what we called operations. Yeah. Um, DPW staff presented their goals. Um, you actually made some revisions to your policies, which was good. Um, I do expect, as Jeff retires uh, on or around the end of September, and we hire a new director that's in process, um, that a new director may well come up with new ideas, but I don't know right. how fast. Right. So I, I do expect you'll see this back in a year or two. I want to skip over employee retention just for a minute and talk about the building security study I think you're all aware of. 
We had an executive session. Uh, we have work going on on the dispatch center. Um, you know, we have the ore in the water for some money from the state. We'll see. Um, number eight, public safety public staffing and training. training. Is that like, you know, is the that one. a Hail Mary? Is yes. that like? In my words, yes. Especially after what you said about the state tonight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to be careful about what we say about the state because no, we I listen. You know, we are, it's not approved yet. There's not a final budget. The point was in a bond bill, you just want to be a member of that. Right. Um, our downtown improvement was in the bond bill for 10 years before anything happened. So there's no way to know. Right. Okay. Yeah, but it's a, it's the place you have to start. It's the it's first It's like being step. in the capital plan. You can't spend right. it until you're in. North Reading has, I think it's $10 million, give or take, for a community center in the bond bill. Will they get funded? Get, How will they get funded? We gotta get Brad working a little harder here. Well, <laughs> so, yeah. so you're suggesting that Mr. Huggins? He, he is the staff lead on this project. Yeah. Working closely with the superintendent, the police chief, and myself. He's the facilities director. And, and, and he thinks he's going to retire? No, 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 Jeff, Jeff Sager, Sager from DPW. Yeah. Boy, I'm going to get a call pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, Jeff Sager is retiring. Oh, Jeff. That's right. Jeff. I remember Jeff. So, can you just tell him he cannot retire, please? No, I can't tell him that. Okay. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to employee retention. That clearly does remain a challenge. I, I think the override made me think we knocked it up to a much better score. And believe me, the morale of employees has helped. Yep. But that doesn't necessarily uh, attract people into the organization. Um, and, um, you know, I don't have a formal list, but I can tell you that compensation is the driver of right. people leaving. I, I, this, is, this is something that is, uh, I know we've talked about it at the edges for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and that um, our inability to, I mean, we retain people. I mean, we retain people, people, we have a loyal um, uh, labor force here. It's the recruitment of new ones that I'm yeah. really worried about. And, you know, compensation, I think, is part of it. I think younger people want to do things differently than folks maybe who came up, you know, working when we started. Um, and, and I worry about it because the expectation is, is that, you know, the voters gave us money for an override. Yeah, where are the cops? Where's all, where, where are all the people that we're supposed to hire? And, well, and the police so, have been hired. Three today. Three. I know. I oh, saw that. But, but um, oh, it, yeah, on the website in, probably. In right. general, in, in general, um, maybe we need to look. And I don't know. Maybe it's part of the FY20 budget. I don't know. Um, is that you know? Are we are we competitive enough to get? high-level quality people here to fill the positions that we need to fill. I'm not saying that we don't have people here already, we do, but those people are going to retire, and with that is an institutional memory that's going to go away. Um, we need to start, you know, getting folks in, and if we can't get them in, you know, if, if the, if the, um, if the stories are, it's like, well, we had three offers out and nobody accepted it, yeah. one or two things are, are true. Either we're not paying enough or this is a lousy town to work for. And I know that number two was not true. So um, I, I, I look at, we really need to sort of think about this, and I don't know if it's part of the budget process, if it's, you know, an, an HR kind of thing. Bob, if you, you know, but I, am, I'm put, I want to put a star next to this. Yeah, John Doherty and I have been concerned about this in slightly different ways for quite some time, but it's it's not as important as replacing what we needed in the override. That was for right. number one. He did put in a little little tiny bit of money for a compensation. I did not on purpose. We did a, a, un, a non-union classification and compensation study, I'm going to say five or six years ago. We implemented. I was very appreciative during tough times that we were able to do that. It's just a different market today. Right. I mean... Yeah. Uh, we lost an employee a week ago for somewhere between a forty and fifty thousand dollar raise in facilities, for instance. So, I mean, we're never going to be able. We're never going to compete. With that. We have a new engineer. It took us two years to hire him. We can't oh. compete with the private sector. We don't so, intend to. Are these communities still taking them that have big, bigger no, it's CIT? It's usually the private. Oh, the private sector. Yeah. Okay. So, it's yeah. a complex area. I will do yeah. what I can. Well, the only thing the that I would say, I think, just a second, I think the, 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 you know, we need to, the board should chew on this. This is a, this is a, um, <clears throat> this has been a tough one for us. 
and um, the board should should uh, I'd like to discuss this further at some point um, okay. and and see think outside the box maybe. I don't know but, but Bob, I agree the I mean, thing is if you're gonna if, uh, if just a second no though, Barry in fairness you answer. interrupted him earlier so much I'll, I'll hand him the mic over oh, there. oh okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll go Thank next you. I, and the only thing I was going to say, Bob, if this is becoming an issue, you just need to come and tell us. And if yeah. we need to look at this whole classification to pay study again, and if we need to just go out there and just say we need to be more competitive and we need to do this, and this is this is the budget impact, you got to just say it. Yeah. I mean, that's I mean, we just can't we can't just sort of hope and pray that we're going to find the right person, you know, who you know works five minutes away and, and will we'll work for ten grand less. Yeah. You got to just you got to let us know. That's the okay. only thing that's going to there, I, I'm glad I let you go first. I agree with you. Um, I think um, it would also behoove us not to make any assumptions. And I would be very interested in knowing what it is like to work here. Um, are there, you know, I had a coworker who um, wasn't interested in a new job because they didn't offer enough time off. Are we losing people because of that? So um, it may, the financial part of it may be one aspect, uh, but there could be other areas where we might be able to um, attract people um, to these positions. Yeah, it's a multifaceted. So, uh, exactly. So I, I agree. If we can put this on the agenda for something in the future, um, I think we should look at this more holistically. Okay. Okay. Sure. Can we move on? Yeah, next group before us is what I'll call policy. Again, pretty good success. Um, the general bylaw review um, was completed last April, although I do understand the bylaw committee is, uh, is aiming for November. I'm not sure they'll make it with a gender neutral um, suggestions. Uh -huh. um, collective bargaining with a legal review was, was very difficult, very challenging, but it worked out really well. Uh, you know about the affordable housing production plan. I, I would ask for your help in the Board of Selectmen policies. Um, as we went through the last year or two, there's, in my mind, there's two kinds of Board of Selectmen policies. There's ones that staff can do, and there's ones that you need to do. Um, Communication is, is a good example. I feel funny suggesting how you should communicate. I can do it if you really ask yeah, me to. No, that's, a, that's on us. Um, but I think from now on that our goals are going to focus on things staff can do without your help, if you will, because mm -hmm. that's something we should be responsible for. Yeah. So the only thing we really didn't complete, and, and it's, it's acknowledged, is uh, Sharon has not circled back to your Article 1 fraud policy yet, but she will, obviously, when okay. the fiscal year closes. Uh, and lastly, I did combine some things. Um, I'll, I'll first address the two items I've listed as on hold, the DPW yard and the uh, master plan. You know, you heard some discussion on night, uh, tonight. The master plan was discussed again last night at CPDC. I know you were there, Vanessa, and I know uh, Gene gave me an update. Um, there's different feelings on CPDC about how and whether to proceed. But in the past, which is what I really wanted to address, um, we, I didn't feel that it was appropriate in order, Gene, to ask the town meeting for $150,000 to $250,000 for an updated master plan. I think the proper course of action is to first get the community together in a couple of sessions, maybe three or mm -hmm. four, and see if the community has a common vision. Because as Gene mentioned, I believe last night, I know she told me several times, um, the adoption rate of master plans in town meetings in Massachusetts is below 50%. And the last thing any of us, I think, want to do is spend $100,000 or $200,000 and then fail. So I think we first need to do a lot more groundwork on what does the community vision. I agree. Um, the DPW yard, um, a third community has become interested. We're actually having breakfast tomorrow morning, so I'll, I'll try to give the board a further update. But that is clearly a project that takes a dedicated person. Um, I can do so much, Gene can do so much. Um, as Barry and I have spoken over the last few months, uh, that seems to be the reasonable expectation for a new economic development director. Okay. Um, and the reason I, we've slowed down on that after going through a process and not agreeing on anyone that Barry talked about is, an, is another one of those three communities is now thinking about hiring an economic development director. So I said, hold on, let's discuss whether we want to share someone. Yeah. You know, Victor's working out well. So it's, they're on hold for a reason. That's not a conflict of interest, is it? <laughs> for? For the person, I mean, we're competing well, for the it's same. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good question. I don't know. Well, if it's a project specific kind of thing. Yeah, not if all three towns or two towns that do the project yeah. hire the person. Uh, okay. You got an update tonight. 
you know, on the cell tower slash water storage. Um, you got an update, uh, I think it was last fall, it could have been in the spring from the uh, Council on Aging as well as a consultant mm -hmm. on the need for more space and for those of you that have been over there during events, it's just very clear. Um, we did a really good job, a surprisingly good job on all the economic development priorities we had for the year, even before Andrew went to California, which was in December and he left at the end of December. So I was, did, I was really did, pleased. Did Andrew... Um provide a summary of his accomplishments before yeah. he left for California. Yeah, we have a tremendous amount of work from, okay. from him to could, use. Could the board take a look at I'm that. not sure how to do that. <laughs> if you want to come in the office and visit. Mm -hmm. um, I will at a future meeting, if you want, walk you through the economic development web website, web mm -hmm. page. Yep. It's a tremendous amount of information okay. there. Feel free to browse. Well, the problem without it having someone to there, us. right? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, updating it, it just becomes stale. Correct. Right. Well, so. Correct. Yeah. What's the status of the new director? Excuse me? What's the status of the new hiring of the um, You want to give an update? Yeah, I mean, um, we interviewed a, actually, I don't know how many resumes actually came in. Dozens. Uh, I think you guys went through them. Well, you and I joined in at the end. I at think the there end. was four. Yeah, four I think or seven six. or eight people might have gotten interviewed. Mm -hmm. Bob and I came in at the end. It was three. One dropped out. We interviewed two. You know, just different skill sets. Just not, not. It did. You know, didn't didn't match. So I mean, that was my opinion. And I guess you haven't hired anybody, so it might have been your opinion yeah, too. Yeah. No, your opinion um, was, was very know, reasonable. I mean, yeah. It's just it's it's not it's not what we need. Right. So not what we needed today. Right. This, this, I think this is where getting some community input. Yep. would help um, yep. so let's brainstorm yeah, we, about that. We thought, and it's subject to change, we thought that in the past few years we had done so much work on different plans and specifically um, down at the um, DPW area with yeah. meetings at RMLD with the neighbors. Yeah. We thought that that concept was very well addressed. Now, it's not a final proposal. You're going to still have public input. Yeah. But we felt pretty good about proceeding with that as a concept because so many neighbors turned out. Um, I think Gene, I can't remember the number, but Gene said there were three different meetings and there was almost no repeat customers and there was 50 to 100 people at each. That's a really good turnout. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Dan has been involved in cable negotiations. The process has gone very well. Um, it hopefully will be completed by the fall. That's you know the next set. But they've done really good work on the, on the beginnings. Um, John and as uh, MWA liaison and I are having breakfast with the executive director next Thursday. Um, all I know is what I read in the newspapers. Uh, North Reading appears to have signed a 99-year deal with Andover. So we're done. we're done. So we're done. But I've not actually heard that from North Reading, so I'm a little reluctant to. I've actually heard. With all due respect, the only, opposite. Only believe what I've heard. <laughs> Anecdotally, uh, however, I don't say. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, let's so. just see which which exactly who, who's, whose contacts are. Well, available. look, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure that we're gonna, you know, we're meeting with the executive director. Yeah, the we'll get the full story. Director. He'll he'll fill in the blanks for us, and we can report back you know, when we're next together. Okay. Bob, I have a general question if yeah. you've gone through the list. Uh, so you have your 20 goals here. This is my first time going through it. Mm -hmm. um, who determine? do we determine your goals? Yeah. Do these goals, have yeah. these goals carried over from year to year? Do we change, uh, What what's the general process for this? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I have worked on, and I don't believe I've showed anyone, including staff, a draft for next year to show you. So I usually start you out with a draft of some possible future goals, and then the board discusses them over two or three meetings. Um, I know previously we had actually scheduled that for tonight. We expected three members tonight. Andy had asked me to defer it, so it's either in the July or the August meeting. Um, it's not something you're going to decide in one night. It's going to take some fleshing out. Yeah, remember it, yeah. And now, when does that happen? Well, it depends on your agendas. Uh, you know, I, think we should start, I think we should start on this now. I mean, not tonight, not but tonight. Tonight. When does yeah. the review happen? Well, I was just going to bring that up. Uh, we've had some preliminary discussions yeah. about that. Uh, want me to answer that? Yes, please. Uh, it's happened anywhere from August to October. Uh, November, actually, but October is usually the month we deliver it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would imply we should start gathering inputs from all members with approval form, 
pass it out, get the inputs back to one person, usually collates it. That's been me in the past. Although that's and that has that. changed. You can't do that anymore. No. Yeah. It's got to be about to maybe HR. Oh, no. Oh, because of privacy? It, it uh, no, it's just a ruling. new open ruling meeting. on open meeting. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah, the board okay. can't so come you know, in. You know, All right. So Caitlin then, or Sharon or, or HR. 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 Yeah. So we, w we would want to start kick this process off by the end of August at the latest. So yeah. now part of that process, if I recall, Bob, you do a self-evaluation? Yeah. And then that gets to, you. to us? Um, so that's, when we do it's your on our agenda for the 31st as to discuss all right, then the I don't process. Know, so yeah, then I, I don't uh, I, I'm happy to bring you all kinds of ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. I think and the, the same with draft the goals. Form that's that we used it the, the last time I yeah. thought was helpful. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. It's the one I think, Bob, you used We use it for all employees, employees so. correct. And it leaves a so. lot of room for, you know, writing individual comments as well, sort of some check the boxes. So how will HR insert themselves into this process and when? And Why don't you just go through Sharon, she can help you. That way I'm not involved. Okay. If, if you mean the town manager evaluation. Right. Yeah, she can help you. Right. Yeah, I, uh, for full disclosure, I did have some questions for Dan. He's been here um, the, the longest and seen more of these than any of us. So I've asked for his help in kind of scheduling it out and making sure it happens in a timely fashion. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to fulfill any uh, role in that the board wants me to, I, or not. <laughs> I, I would um, ask the board to um, give, allow Dan to give input into agenda items uh, so we get these things done okay. on, on time. Is, is that are people okay with that? I think it's great. All right. Yeah, because part of it too, what what kind of dovetails to that is that we have to get the evaluation done. Yeah. Because at a certain point, we need to finalize. Yeah. The town manager's contract. Yeah. So that's going which, on. Which we is need. Is that to, renewed in January? Uh, I think we'll probably. I think we talked about doing it more toward November. We, we want to get that. We talked about it in the second quarter of this year, but yeah, you yeah. missed that. Right. We, right. But I mean, at least getting it, getting it. And then we'll develop, new, and, and it also along this process, we'll develop new goals. Yes. Right. And and I'll just give a preview of my thoughts. I think Bob has way too many goals here. It's <laughs> arguable. You know, I, I some understand. Some of these goals that some of these are like, uh, yeah. it's like a big Aspirations. Right. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like there's, there's strategic and then there's tactical. Well, mm -hmm. and then, you know. Yeah, we can have a discussion about yeah. it. The good goal is measurable. Progress should be measurable yeah. or you have right. tangible yeah. things that are done, deliverables. Yeah. Right. Some of them are long-term long projects, some of them are short-term projects. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yes. And the you goal like setting and goals. Go I'd like as many goals as you can think of because uh, then I can pick which ones to do. Okay. The goal setting and the goal measuring process can be extremely time intensive. Yeah. I just keep in mind the benefit of adding more time. Right. Um, I wrote up a four page summary that I think adequately describes the year. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the superintendent's evaluation, they spent hours and hours and hours yeah. going over that. A state mandate. I know, and I don't mean to compare the jobs, but do you really want to go down a path of spending hours and hours and getting a similar result? It's up to you. Uh, yeah, we can discuss that. Okay. Um, John, what's your experience been in the past on these goals? Well, the one that, you know, I mean, we, these have actually been trimmed. Yeah. Um, really? They were. Really? Oh, yeah. It was like 25. It was 25 when And I so started. what we did was, you know, we tried to cluster them yes. into things that, you know, were connected to each other. Yes. Which I think you're seeing here. And then, you know, there were certain keys. So, for example, I mean, there's not going to be a, um, a water tower going next time. Right. I mean, because we're right. there. So, I mean, so some of these yeah. fall away on their own. Yeah. And then other things have to materialize because it's like, okay, we got to finish the negotiations on cable this year. You yes. Know, that kind of thing. Um, I will say that the condensed format that we have kind of created as our own hybrid over the course of the last several years has worked very effectively. Yeah. You can you can literally in, instead of spending ten hours, you can spend two and do a very effective job of, you know, evaluating and you know, yeah. and, and moving forward. So I don't know that we need to really fool with that too much. It seems like it's been working pretty well. Yeah. I mean how I mean you're the one being evaluated and you know, and you're the one creating I think 
goals, so your input's really important to this. The most, the most important, personally, the most important feedback I get from you isn't a grade or a score, it's comments. Right. Yeah. So I encourage you to spend, yeah. and I, I understand that it takes a lot of your time and thought, and I do yeah. appreciate that, but your comments but are helpful. those forms will actually, yeah. they, they actually kind of demand it. Yeah. Which yeah, I they, think they is much better than it out. pages and pages yeah. and pages yeah. of check the box. What I find odd, um, or just unusual to me, John, in this is that in, when we supervise people um, in, in, in the state, um, they have job duties, like five job duties. Right. Right. And then we, we evaluate them on those five job duties. Bob's job duty by charter is to run the day-to-day -day business of the town. Right. So we're not really, I, this seems to be a, dis, not that I'm proposing, I, I don't know, I just, uh, well, it seems to be a it, dis, he really only, he really only has about five or six goals, but there are subsets of those right. goals. So, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, because yeah. I do think, generally speaking, if you have more than a handful of goals, mm -hmm. um, it, it's a little hard to keep yourself focused. In terms of having 20 goals here, they're really tied to five key areas of Bob's responsibility. Yeah. He's got global responsibilities by the nature of the job he has. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's very different. It's a very different evaluation. Yeah. So, for example, I mean, you know, among my, among our in my last professional job, uh, we were in a partnership, and you know. I mean, we evaluated the CEO yeah. um, as an executive committee. The CEO had a million jobs. I mean, he, he had right. responsibility right. for all kinds of things. Yeah. They cluster into a handful of things, uh, and then subsets ebb and flow. And so, to me, even though this says 20, does it say 20 or 21? 20, 20. 20. Yeah. You know, next year might be 18, might be 22, but how many categories? Five. Um, it's four or five. Okay. Name on it. Right. So, I think so that's these the are key. these are these are goals rather than duties. Right. This is not duties. This, this right. is so different right. from duties. Right. So Caitlin has a set of duties that she has to fulfill, and, and, and Bob will. Um, kind of put up with us. No. Yeah. Like the major. That's a goal. <laughs> that, that's a goal. <laughs> hey, hey. That, definitely wait a minute. aspirational. <laughs> um, all if right. I, if I may. Bob, yes. Um, you know, one of the things you, you should think about is, all right, there's 20 goals. Um, what percent of my job and my responsibility are the goals? Right. I would argue it's at most 10%. Yeah. Right. And I think it's important that the board realize 90% of my job is other things when you're evaluating me. Yeah. And I don't know how to capture that other than we have an well, evaluation say, form that's you broad. Why ten percent? I mean, collect the taxes, keep labor peace. There's so many yeah. things right. that you don't see. Right. Um, those are my primary responsibilities and my day-to-day -day work. Um, no one can argue that any one of these is not important. But what if none of them happened? The town would still function very well. Actually, a lot of this stuff is probably genius. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Right. But the, the point is, this is, if you will, in some ways, a nice-to-have list. Now, the override was pretty essential. We were yeah. getting tough, but you know, the board needs to keep in mind these are 20 goals on top of a job, right. and other town managers, to Andy's point, have five yeah. on top but of their so, job. So, how much of this stuff can be offloaded to, let's say, the board? To who? To the board. It's a discussion we should have. <coughs> yeah, I'm I mean, I'm happy to share, but. When I saw this, when I saw it last year, I was, um, I, I'd never seen anything like it. Um, you know, it seems like some of this is, uh, while they might be one-offs, the water tower is a good example here. It still has to do with the daily operations of the town. We need a water tower. Right. Um, I don't know if I would set that as a goal. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the the update I think was was timely and relevant from Ryan. Um, but does it have to be here? You know, you sort of check that box and we got a water tower. Great. Um, you know, some of these other things. Employee retention to me would be more in keeping with something at your level. It might be a small portion of your job. But that's really important to the functioning yeah. of the town. Um, and there's several on here that that sort of fall into that. Category, um, you know, obviously, board of selection policies. You know, 
take it or leave it. Um, but so I, I, to me, that's one of the things I'd like to review is can we can we make this more specific to what we really want above and beyond what he's already doing? Yeah, and I also think we need to capture what you're doing um, because that's not very. It's not. It's not fair to just give these as your goals and. It gives the impression that that's all you do, Bob, and I know it's not. Well, so I, I know you know that, but it's just important that when you evaluate me, you don't just look at this piece of paper. Right. That's right. right. So well, that's why you're going to you're going to evaluate yourself. Oh, aren't you? Did, well, you if you if the board, I mean, we're getting into another agenda topic, but if the board wants to use the same process generally as in the past in the same forms, mm -hmm. then we have the form that all employees use or most, mm -hmm. and I would be happy to fill that out and give myself a running start. But that's for the next right. meeting. Or but I, but I think that's important because that gives us an idea about how you yep. view the job and you use that. And I t tend to ask the department heads for feedback. Right. right. I, I did. On three six some of these, not all. Of right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that worked well, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we need to. Dan, you know, John have been here. Uh, not calling you old. I'm just saying you've been here longer uh, than than the three you of say us. Experience. Expe thank you. And um, <laughs> so, so you probably know a lot more about what Bob does, but I don't. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I just think it's important to be to let the town know all the things you do. Bob, you, you, you're available on email too much. <laughs> I, I email you at all times of day and night. Yeah, well, and then stop. Always, <laughs> stop. But, but, but no, I can't. I have to because that's when I'm not working. I have a job. So we got a public records request at 2:30 a.m. last night. Yeah. So, uh, so I didn't answer it right away. Okay. <laughs> So I'm concerned about that, that, that you feel, I think I sent something to the police chief and you uh, uh, and saying this can wait till Monday. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a good move. Yeah. yeah. Even so, though it's convenient for you to send it at 2 yeah, in the morning. Yeah, that's you know, when I have to do it that. because yeah. that's when I have free time. Right. So, okay. okay. Any, uh, any other thoughts? No, I, I didn't say much about the last one, but I, oh. I do want to thank Amy especially. Um, mm -hmm. Um, Amy, uh, Paul Jackson, oh, yeah. and yep. uh, Laura Jem, um, along with others listed here, oh, have submitted a, a grant application and have done a nice first start. Um, you know, one of the things I think we do poorly is we have a tremendous set of historical documents and artifacts in this town that we need to find a good permanent location for. Yes. Um, because the history, you know, the, their condition is not going to improve. No. Let's just say it that way. And if people have an interest in history, yeah. you know, that's another thing that should be on the town's to-do list. But of course, we have so many other things on the list. You know, maybe that has been a topic for five yeah, years. Maybe if we get a community center in some way, shape, or form, we steal North Reddings. Um, you know, that can be part of it, is there can be a history room or something. So, I, I did want to thank them, though, specifically. Yeah, that's that's they an about face for the library. Much appreciated. Yes. They're getting involved in Totally that. different approach yeah. than yeah. what we saw previously. And that's really welcome. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, that's it. Okay. Thank you, Bob. If we're thank you. Us, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, at what point, and um, stop me because this isn't in the agenda, but it's, it's just a question. Um, at what point do executive meeting minutes become public, and when do we review those? When yeah. the uh, purpose for the executive session has lapsed, then they can be released. You can't approve them in executive prior to that point. You can. In fact, you should. You should approve you, them. They should be approved on a timely basis. Okay. Yet, yet another thing to add. So, can for the for the two most recent executive sessions, yeah. can we add that to the agenda for next week to have to, to review those next week. minutes? Next week. Oh, not next the, week. The, the, the next <laughs> meeting on July 31st. Next time you have an executive session. Yeah. Unless you, you do that when you're in executive yeah. session until uh, our you can, is it true you can well, approve we can them outside as long as you don't make changes and discuss them? Yes. Yes. Um, the key is um, some executive se sessions are one topic, some are yes. more than one topic. Right. right. Um, I don't have a problem with it, with releasing them in portions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, some people don't like that. 
You mean like a partial reactive? So, so I could, there could be three topics, and we yeah. could effectively only report on one of them and say these are one third. Well, minutes. there was, th during those two meetings, there was um, one topic at one of them and two topics on the other one. Right. Um, one of them I know for certain is closed um, because we voted right. on And the other ones are not. The other two are not. Um, collective bargaining is not yet complete. Okay. So none of those minutes would be released. Okay. Um, the way it says in can uh, we the add? Can we set executive session to review those minutes? Yeah, I, I'd for the like next to, to to so just do to have an executive session just to review you can. minutes. Let, let me yeah, ask yeah, town can. council. I don't. The rules have changed on this. Mm -hmm. oh. I believe. I believe. I'm not sure. Would have to be now approved in open session. Oh. That does not meet you. Uh, you can meet an executive session to discuss them, though. But let me find out the ins and outs. Board of Health did that. I asked the town mm -hmm. clerk a while ago to provide me a list of executive session minutes that were not yet released. Um, the board had some topics a few years ago for which there still is a reason to retain those mm -hmm. minutes in executive session. Yeah. But I have released some. I'm supposed to release some every six months or yeah. something. Yeah. Do you anticipate having us to go into executive session again on things like collective, for collective bargaining? Yes. Soon? I don't know. I just don't know. I'd, li I'd like to have that on the agenda. Yeah, Should yeah, there be right. minutes that can I, be released in general, that are closed, um, even if it's in part for the next meeting? Yeah. In, in general, um, <coughs> I'd like to get the, the minutes plug in, plug in. out, all minutes so out, as quickly as we can. Um, yeah, that was something else. Yeah, and to, to the just so you know, the, the process of releasing executive no, session minutes good. after they're approved. Yeah. I could ask you to approve them before they're released and sit on them. I could do it that way. Um, you could just yeah. approve them, but then I'd, I'm ultimately the ones responsible yeah. for releasing them. It has to yeah. be my decision. Um, or I can wait for you until I think they can be released for you to approve them. So that's something you should also consider is what's your preference. I don't care. I think that the two most recent meetings, um, I think, need to be released, need to be reviewed and approved at our next meeting. And portions. The, the Por portions, portions that are possible, right. yes. And, and the minutes from the last meeting, June 19th. So it's June um, 19th and 515. Right. Yeah, the right one. So is that possible that, and, and for, the, for the executive session, we'll maybe have a 645 executive session or whatever is needed to get that done. I see that um, you have uh, a draft um, FY19 goals and working groups. Um, you know, we should all look at that and, and uh, decide how we want to. Yeah, that's your next meeting, so yeah. send your thoughts. Has that been sent to us? Yeah. It's right here. I didn't see that. Right where? Where, where, where is that? Was that, that in the handout? Um, I got who, to be you it 18 or 19. This on when I we might met? have, yeah. yeah. I gave you two um, a copy that they yeah. haven't seen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Special right. treatment. Have Public I, have I talked that? about I it. I'll send it to that. them. Um, yes, that was my stab at, I don't remember, 10 or 20 FY19 goals. Yeah. So those will be forwarded to us. I'll, I'll send those. Okay. To cool. Put it in the minutes. So, um, just one more thing, um, Caitlin. Yes. Hang, hang with us. We're almost done. Um, the the um, we're going to have a jam-packed agendas for the meetings coming up. Yep. Um, and I, I want to run them by you. Uh, I want to run by you them by you for you know if you want additions because then Bob will have to break the. Space time continuing <laughs> and allow it to happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, at I a just need point, to know yeah. because the 31st, gonna, yes. Well, because I have to cancel it. It sounds like I'm going to have to cancel a vacation, which I will do. Well, we can we can change the dates. Uh, you know, that is a think about it, John. Be careful and with that. Uh, selecting yeah. dates get set well in advance and people make plans. So. No, 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 no. So. I, I know, but um, I want to be um, sensitive to. John, John should be present for the discussion and allowed to speak. Well, I am not going to have another public meeting go on in my absence, as has happened in the past. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk all that through. But I want to make sure, I don't want you to cancel your vacation plans. But well, you that wanted the to have, alternative. You wanted this is to have serious happen. business. The, the other thing, Mr. Chair, if I can maybe just throw this out. Yeah. Um, you know, today is the 10th. Yes. We don't, we don't have a meeting scheduled for the 31st. I am not you know, in the summertime, trying to create more work for people who already have vacation plans. Don't even think about but it. But if the 31st is, a, if we're not going to get out of here till 2 in the morning, 
because there's so many things on there. Yep. Maybe we need to think about adding another meeting. Mm. I, I, you know, don't all shoot me, but I, I'd rather. <laughs> I may. <laughs> yeah. And I've got vacation places. I, I, so I may even be, you know. I, I did the survey a couple months ago. You know, if you're well, willing to have three person meetings. The 10th through the 31st. Yeah. Well, you are going to be You've already today. canceled one yeah. Yeah. to be yeah. here tonight because of the change of agenda yeah. that came late. I drove, I drove okay. uh, well, you know, addition to So I, I months ago, I that. set this date aside. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I came back. Now, if, you know, we're going to be busy, you know, if, if we've made a decision that we need to go back instead of go forward, then let's do it. And, you know, and if it's the 31st, and what I have to do is cancel a vacation to get it done, I will do that. We can, I'll tell you what, we are allowed to discuss uh, amongst the five of us in CC Bob meeting dates, preferences for meeting dates, preferences for agendas. That that doesn't break open meeting law. So we can if have we if we can if we talk through him. Yes. No. 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 You can go no. We can go Those directly. Those are exemptions. Exemptions. I, I don't, um, is it true about the agenda setting too? Not the agenda item. Just I don't the think you can do your so, availability. And it, it might be helpful uh, if we review, you know. Andy, what is on the agenda for the thirty-first. Okay. So um, the entire board said we'll be here. Um, so maybe I was incorrect in writing that down, John, for the thirty-first. Is that right? I, I've had that. That has been in the books for yeah. me for okay. two years. Okay. John had told us the 10th and the 31st he was unlikely to attend uh, several months okay. ago. Okay, I, I obviously jotted that down in the wrong spot. Approve, renew Metro North Regional Housing Services Intermunicipal Agreement. Um, Council on Aging Update, Board of Cemeteries, Trustees Policy Update, Discuss Town Manager FY19 Draft Goals, and Town Manager Evaluation Process. And, and you need to add in Ray Miaris and the open meeting law right. discussion. And and then there's the open meeting law. So and then you wanted to talk about the rec committee. And, and, and the rec committee. But but I, I will defer to John on that. John, think about All right. when you like to have, I, you know, I, I know you want to have the discussion soon. Um, I... Well, the reason for that is the tone of how it's left. Well, let's not rehash it. We're sticking strictly yeah. to the schedule and when we can meet to well, discuss it. Please, please, not, you know, uh, please no, don't look. speak to me like a child. Please don't. Well, I don't let's not rehash John, John, I mean, this is, John, this is my not. reputation that is being brought into question here. John, and what we're trying to address now is the scheduling of when we can talk about it. Good. Right. So, uh, uh, so, so maybe that could get pushed out to the August one, so to leave time for Well, the, the town manager stuff can be pushed out to August, but you got to do it at no, some we point. If no, we, we have, have to get that have to know what the Are you okay actually wait a minute. having it done on, uh, speaking about it on August 21st, you even have it That's 31st. August 31st, July 31st is. What does it say, August, no, August 21st. So there's July 31st. August 21st. And August 21st. You're going to be on vacation for well, the 31st. And with those, no, those no, three no. weeks in between, we can throw another meeting in there if we have to. If everybody can do it, we will discuss. Good luck. <laughs> I yeah. don't want to do it, but if that's if that accommodates members um, and also <coughs> spreads out some of the things so that we can have, I don't want to rush through a conversation on setting goals because there's yeah. nine things on the I, agenda. I totally agree. Although for August 21st, there's only two things on the agenda um, right. and that are not not well. We'll see. I, I think we need to. Can you can you work with? And just yes. Figure it out. Yeah. Just let us know. But yeah. I also would like. John All right, I'll give you some input. Okay. And you know, if it needs to be the, if we need to move out to August with it, in the interest of many issues here, then so be it. Um, okay. I, I, mean, I you know I regret that we had to, you know, you kind of open it halfway and then you. And then you don't. Well, that was, and that's a, and to me that's a problem. I, I know, John, and and it was a tough decision, but but um, I thought it was something we needed to address that aspect quickly, and then I'd but like. But that's not something that can be done quickly. And, and Andy, with all due respect, no, the switch of the liaison is what I'm saying. The switch of the liaison is fine. Right. I started this meeting 
yeah. giving you the opportunity to solve that problem yeah. instantly. Yes. And you know, yeah. for some reason, I don't know if it was we were playing to the audience, no, or what it was, but we, you know, we needed to go someplace else so as to do it in a in a half-hearted way, which left open questions that I think it was highly inappropriate. That's just my opinion. I understand. Uh, uh, one other plea with the uh, agendas. Uh, yes. Let's be more realistic on the allotted time for the items. We yes. We tend to we wickedly uh, underestimate yes. the time. That, yes. And that may mean we do fewer items per meeting, and we're going to be more choosy about what we do. Or well, maybe our liaison reports are done in a different way, because they tend to take up yeah. time. But, those yeah. are, but then again, we heard that people actually like them. So I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Right. Maybe there's another way to deliver Well, just pithiness and everything is good. I, I, I'll double check with, uh, if somebody can double check, call uh, the open meeting law uh, attorney of the day. I, I, I think that we are allowed to um, You're allowed to discuss logistics of meetings. Logistics, but that's that, not the topic of self meetings. In, in every single one of our handouts, our, yeah. our packets that yes. look ahead on the agendas, yeah. right. there's plenty of opportunity to comment to Bob or to you, okay. maybe Bob and you on what should be in there. I don't know that we need a whole new freestanding process for doing that. Just a suggestion. I'm worried about this Monday night thing because what's the expectation yeah. on turnaround? No, no. The Monday night thing was just that if. Yeah. It, it wanted to be inclusive of you, and, yeah. and if you had, hey, Andy, we really need to talk about this. Just a this. final sh All right, that's a final fine. look, yeah. uh, so look see a, at it. There's a drop dead time and, beyond which. And, it's and also, presumed. so you don't see the agenda three right. nights before it happens. You know, one of the ways to solve this liaison report thing is we write it and submit it. Right. But Good. now it becomes part of the packet. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah. And yeah. everybody in town can read it. And you look at the too. website and there it is. Yeah. And we can probably what yeah. what seems like it should be 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Invariably is you know 30 to 40. Minutes. I know. I know. So uh, that again ties into our communication policy how we're going to better communicate. And I think that's a great idea. Writing it succinctly and then giving it Providing it to, to people. If I might ask yes, a question, um, I don't remember this kind of discussion ever with past boards, um, but this board has indicated a real strong interest in knowing how many members will attend as to what the agenda items will be. I think you need to discuss that thought more. How many members will attend? <laughs> um, we've been asked on a couple occasions the cell tower discussion was going to be April, but then you know, agenda management, if there's known to be three members at a meeting mm -hmm. and that has an implication on the agenda, we need to know that as staff because we plan agendas well in advance. Right. And when suddenly I'm told, well, there's only three members, so we can't discuss <coughs> this or can't discuss that, I need to understand what your policy is and then I need to ask you about your attendance a little more often. I don't, I'm not having an opinion of what's the right, right. way. We just need to right. have that communication. Thoughts? Thoughts? I mean, I think there's certain topics that the full board should be in attendance for. Yes. Budget, annual okay. review. Yes. Um, I mean, I think as a as a <clears throat> general best practice, we can't. Or I, I would be hesitant to reschedule meetings yeah. on the fly as as people's personal conflicts come up. There's five of us, and personal right. conflicts are always going to come up. Right. Um, five and I, we also need to be respectful of the fact that staff prepare for these meetings as well. Um, so I, I think advanced planning, this was actually on my list to discuss um, with Barry, which now will wait, but um, as far as communication, yeah, um, which is schedule planning um, for the meetings. But, uh, you know, I mean, maybe we set us at the top five items that are happen annually that are anticipated and the rest, you know, um, well, sort of have there to are make, some yeah, deadlines I, that, or something. I mean, I, you know, if there's three of you that can meet as a quorum, you have to do it. You have to close the warrant for town right, meetings. Right, there is a deadline right. yeah, um, yeah. for tax classification. There are deadlines with the state. So there's only a handful of maybe four or five things you do during the year that have hard deadlines. Uh, you you mentioned me. Uh, sorry, Barry. Um, I, I didn't drink out of it. You, when we met, um, you mentioned that the. You know, we all go on vacation, and that we can't stop the business of the town um, if one of us is away or, or two of us are away. 
I would just ask the, the board, what are topics that we have to have the entire well, We haven't board. found ourselves over past years embroiled in a lot of the things that obviously seem to have taken great importance and precedence yes. in the dead of summer. This is, for me, brand new. Mm -hmm. It's never happened before. Yes. So that people could come and go, and we'd have three-person meetings or four-person yes. meetings, and people right. could enjoy right. their vacation, and they could actually plan yep. vacation and go on it. Right. You know, yep. the, the way that we're operating today, can't do it. I mean, because, well, you know, every week's a new crisis. Yes, that is and true. And it's, you know, I, I mean, it's a chaotic form of management. I mean, I think what Bob does, Bob puts out the forward agendas, yeah. you know, that change kind of on a weekly or monthly basis depending right. upon yep. things exactly. that come up. I think it's a great process because then we can kind of look in advance. If something comes up, we know, okay, we can slot it in here. Can, you know, oh, we haven't talked to... Uh, we haven't talked to um, a track in a while. Okay, well, this looks like a good time, you know. And then you can get, you know, you can kind of just slot them in as you go. And I think a lot of them you leave specifically kind of blank yes, because absolutely. you know, um, so we can slip things in. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and it's been. I mean, it's worked since I've been on the board, and I get to kind of look at sort of okay, what's coming up? What do I need to think about? And in advance. And if you don't mind, most of your volunteer boards that are going to visit you require a minimum of two months' notice, and preferably three or four. Right. Some of them only meet once a month, right. okay. and they want to prepare for right. you. And so many of them struggle with quorum, right. always. Yes. So two Recreation of them that are coming, yes. yeah, two are coming at your next meeting. I would ask you not to rearrange that because they planned on this for months. Right. Um, <laughs> the board of cemetery trustees, trustees yeah. Yeah, and, and the, the council, council on aging. aging. Hey, look. This other topic that you know we've you know that we've cracked the lid on, it's got to be addressed. Yeah. And if the best time to address it in a timely way is the 21st of August, so be it. Yeah. But I you know, I just would like to go on record. Yeah. With with you as the chair. Yes. Or I would caution against opening a can of worms halfway and then putting the lid on it and then let it sit because John, John, no good thing comes of that right. in my you, opinion. You said that. I hear you um, and it was a difficult call and um, uh, you know I, I did the, the best I could and I and I and I'm not uh, trying to um, go back to the back to the future. Jeez. Um, I, I'm not trying to uh, I want to make this a learning experience. I not, have no problem with not clarifying a, not the a, process. Right. Yeah. I do have a problem and I'm with not calling, it halfway. Yeah. You know, either do it or don't do right. it. But, but I, I felt I didn't have a choice tonight. Well, you didn't have a choice because there was a large audience that was obviously being pandered to. Uh, by who? Me? Uh, yeah. Right, that's, I think, I think that's... I, think I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? 